who those people are in that vehicle mm -hmm. and was this an intentional act or not would be the two big questions for investigators right now. Okay, and as far as the connection between Canadian and U.S. Uh, officials working on this very closely, you noted that the FBI is no doubt uh, spearheading this investigation. But what about, what can you tell us as far as OPP is concerned uh, and other Canadian officials assisting in this investigation? Well, if that vehicle came from the Canadian side as reported, and this hasn't been confirmed yet, we'll be clear on that, uh, the OPP, the RCMP, the Niagara region, they'll all work collaboratively uh, to help identify uh, the people that were in that registered vehicle if, in fact, they crossed the border from Canada into uh, the United States, where it came from, who was the registered owner, and then pick that vehicle up as it traveled wherever it came from to, to, to track all of its movements from the time it left, wherever it left from, until the time that it arrived here at the border. Now, of course, as you can imagine, because, Steve, this what took place at a U.S.-Canada border crossing, we're now learning, too, that the local Buffalo airport is also now screening vehicles that are coming in and out of the airport. Can you t talk on and touch on uh, th the element of now uh, airports in the area now t taking precaution in regards to what took place at, at the Rainbow Bridge? Yeah, not a surprise. And that's as a result of the... Uh, uh, remarks that were made by the minister saying that they were treating this as though it was terror related even though they haven't confirmed that yet or they haven't confirmed that to us the general public based on what they see on its face they would treat it that way and in doing such they would close the borders as has been done and the airports would be screened as well it's all part of the protocols as they proceed with this investigation and there are uh, protocols specific protocols in place when it comes to terror-related incidents, if in fact this was one, and they would just be following up on each one of those. I'm not sure if you've been able to speak to any uh, police officials on the ground where you are, Steve, but any indication as to when possibly things might be reopened, or is it safe to say that the area where you're, you are, as well as uh, the live pictures we've been showing as far as the heavy police presence, is likely to stay in place for the next several hours? Yeah, no, I haven't spoken with anybody, but I can assure you that this will be closed for quite some time while they continue with the investigation, uh, particularly now that they've got two dead bodies inside of that one vehicle. This has been ramped up that much more, and it's going to take some time before this bridge is cleared for sure. CP24, Steve Ryan reporting for us live in Niagara. Thank you, Steve. And Lena, with that, I'll hand it back over to you. All right, Kayla, thank you for this. And again, if you're just joining us, we're following major breaking news. Uh, there has been an explosion on the Rainbow Bridge, a vehicle exploded at a border crossing point just a few hours ago. Multiple reports suggest that two people inside that vehicle that exploded have been pronounced dead on scene. We'll keep a really close eye on this story and staying with that. Former Toronto police officer Mark Mendelson says the investigation into the blast is going to be a complex one. Talk about a multi-jurisdictional investigation. You're going to have the New York State Police. You're going to have the FBI involved. You're going to have alcohol, tobacco, and firearms from the U.S. You're going to have Homeland Security. You're going to have Canada Border Services, the OPP, and Niagara Regional. And all of them are going to play a part in this initial investigation. And Americans on the Canadian side of the border say they're making plans in case they're unable to return home. I'm actually from uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car's actually in New York right now. If I now open it soon, I'll probably get the place to sleep over here. It's all, I can't, if I can't go home. We're not reading. Really yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last. And Toronto police say due to today's incident at the Canada-U.S. border, they will be increasing directed patrols of uniformed officers throughout the city. Police also say this is out of an abundance of caution and there are no known threats for the city of Toronto. Meantime, White House Press Secretary Corrine Jean-Pierre says U.S. President Joe Biden has been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry and that he and his team are closely following developments. It's 328 five degrees. You're watching Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Keep it here as we keep a really close eye on this breaking news story. An explosion on the Rainbow Bridge, a vehicle exploding at this border crossing point. Niagara Regional Police saying it happened on the U.S. side and multiple media reports suggesting two people in that vehicle have been pronounced dead on scene. National security sources telling CTV News Government officials are operating under the assumption that this incident is 
terror related. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All liens registered against you. Lending money? Register a lien against a person or a business. Are you buying or leasing a vehicle? Check for liens registered against it. Know your customer. Conduct a corporate profile search at easyppsa.com. Easyppsa.com. All right, we are following breaking news. An official with the Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center confirms there are fatalities in today's explosion on the Rainbow Bridge. And we can now tell you multiple reports suggest two people inside that vehicle that exploded have been declared dead on scene. CP24's Kayla Williams joins us live with the latest details. And as we take a look at these live images, Kayla, mm -hmm. uh, we understand this is a multi jurisdictional investigation. The FBI is involved, and officials on this side of the border also very involved. Yeah, certainly, Lena, considering the location of where this incident, this explosion took place right at the Canada-U.S. border. As you noted, uh, it's taking officials on both sides of the border uh, as this investigation continues. We now know that Canadian government officials are operating under the assumption that this is, in fact, a terror-related incident. And at this point in the investigation, they are working to confirm if it is, in fact, an isolated incident. But because of what transpired at the Rainbow Bridge this morning and into the afternoon, Four bridges are now shut down. It includes the Lewiston Queenston Bridge, Whirlpool Bridge, Rainbow Bridge, where the incident took place, and the Peace Bridge as well. Uh, now, we did hear from officials earlier this afternoon, including Prime Minister Trudeau, as well as Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc and OPP Sergeant Carrie Schmidt on the investigation. And here's more of what they had to say. This is an evolving situation. Uh, information is coming. Uh, into Canadian authorities from their American counterparts uh, literally minute by minute. Um, and we don't think it's, it's helpful uh, or responsible to speculate uh, on that sort of detail. What our job at this moment is, is to assure all Canadians that their security and safety is obviously our paramount consideration. Uh, we're doing that work as we always do on a minute by minute basis with our American counterparts. This is obviously a very serious situation in Niagara Falls. Uh, there was a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge crossing. I've been briefed by the NSIA and the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, CBSA, RCMP and Transport Canada are all fully engaged in providing the necessary support. There are a lot of questions and we are following up to try and get as many answers as rapidly as possible.
I just got off the phone with my colleagues down at the U.S. Border uh, Protection uh, um, Agency in Niagara Falls. On the, they are on site at the Rainbow Bridge, waiting for updates from the FBI and the ongoing investigation that's going on on their side of the bridge at Rainbow. Uh, in the interim, we have now shut down Highway 405, which is a feeder off of the QEW just past St. Catharines, which leads to the Queenston Lewiston Bridge. That uh, border crossing, uh, as it, as well as the Peace Bridge down at Fort Erie at the bottom end of the QW are both closed. So as you just heard from OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt, these close, closures of the bridges as well as roadways, the 405, as he noted, certainly going to have a ripple effect on commuters over the course of the next several hours. Timing of this as well is also... Uh, worth noting considering tomorrow marks the American Thanksgiving long weekend and so typically the border is often quite busy. This is a live shot of the scene as you can see the heavy police presence remains intact now as we uh, head into the afternoon hours but I also want to talk about the uh, other officials that have been briefed on this from all levels of government, including that of Premier Doug Ford. He put out a tweet in regards to the situation. We'll read it for you. It says that I've been made aware of the situation unfolding on the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls. Our provincial law enforcement is actively engaged in assessing the situation. We are working with local law enforcement and are providing support as required. Now, on the U.S. side of things, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, she put out this tweet that said, at my direction, New York State Police is actively working with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force to monitor all points of entry to New York. I am traveling to Buffalo to meet with law enforcement and emergency response and will update New Yorkers when more information becomes available. Uh, we also know that we're expecting to hear, uh, this is a live shot actually of Buffalo, New York uh, this afternoon, and we're expecting to hear from Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown at some point today in regards to the explosion that took place at the Rainbow Bridge. And I do believe we have CP24 Steve Ryan, who is available Let's go to Steve now. Steve, if you can hear me, talk to us about your point of view. Uh, we are showing live pictures of a shot from the Buffalo side of things uh, at this Rainbow Bridge. Of course, this, the location of this explosion is uh, very important as this requires both sides of the border, Canada and the U.S., to work diligently on this investigation. Yeah, that's right. And the border right now is a sealed shut so it's eerily quiet here at the uh, uh, rainbow bridge anybody who's familiar with this area is quite familiar with how busy this can be at all uh, times of the day especially given the fact that it is the american thanksgiving tomorrow but as we heard from the uh, uh, government announcements earlier on they are treating this as though it was an act of terror now there has been no facts given to us to support that but given the fact that its location, the, the border crossing, given the fact the tensions that are going on right now in the mid Middle East, mm -hmm. given the fact that it is American Thanksgiving tomorrow, all those things circumstantially would cause them to treat it as such, but there are no facts yet to support the fact that it was an act of terror. But if it was, the bridge behind me here that you've seen that sealed off is now would be a crime scene. So this is why nobody's getting across that right now. Yeah, absolutely. And have you been able to see or hear of, of locals there, people who perhaps who may have just been going about their day and didn't realize what happened there earlier? Uh, people have walked by since I arrived here and just said off the cuff as they're walking past us uh, that they were very surprised, saddened, and shocked by what's gone on. And people were concerned whether or not there were injuries and or fatalities. And that those uh, conversations I had with people here on the street happened before we broke the news that two people were found inside of that vehicle. Certainly. Now, when we take a look at the pictures from initially before we knew that two people were confirmed, I mean, the damage is quite extensive. This this explosion uh, was quite damning. And so what what does that do for this investigation as this continues on for the FBI, for local authorities? And, and what can you tell us as far as now that we're learning that there is a, a heightened uh, police presence at the Buffalo uh, Airport as well as Toronto Pearson and even Toronto police tweeting out that they are going to be on alert given what transpired today? Well, I think what you're seeing 
fall into place are all the protocols that are required when it comes to anything that may be terror related. And this could all be as a result of the announcement that was made by the uh, minister just a short time ago saying that they are treating this incident as though it was terror related. So now, as far as the investigators go on the other side of the border, if you are the FBI, you're looking at identifying who those people are, where they came from, what their motive was, was this intentional, and if in fact it was, why? These are all questions that need to be answered. They will be facts, and then with those facts, the investigators can go on a working theory. But right now, they are using this blanket approach mm -hmm. to approach this whole uh, situation based on what they see on its face. Not facts that we know of, but what they see on its face. And this is why the borders are closed. This is why the airports are now being more scrutinized. It's all of these protocols are falling into place as a result of what we heard from the feds just a short time ago. Okay, CP24, Steve Ryan reporting for us live in Niagara. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Again, multiple reports confirming two people inside the vehicle that exploded at the Rainbow Bridge have died. Lena, it's back over to you. All right, Kayla, thank you for this. And again, all border crossings in the Niagara region have been closed after that vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge, as Kayla was just talking about. Multiple reports indicating that the two people inside that vehicle were pronounced dead on scene. This is a multi-jurisdictional investigation. Uh, it's unclear if at this point if it was intentional, but national security sources do tell CTV News government officials are operating under the assumption that this is terror-related. They're also working to uh, determine if this was an isolated incident. We are hearing from former Toronto police officer Mark Mendelson. He says the investigation into this blast is going to be a complicated one. Take a listen. Talk about a multi-jurisdictional investigation. You're going to have the New York State Police. You're going to have the FBI involved. You're going to have alcohol, tobacco, and firearms from the U.S. You're going to have Homeland Security. You're going to have Canada Border Services, the OPP, and Niagara Regional. And all of them are going to play a part in this initial investigation. Now, Americans on the Canadian side of the border say they're making plans just in case they're unable to return home. I'm actually from uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car's actually in New York right now. If I now open it soon, I'll probably get the place to sleep over here. So I can't, if I can't go home. We're not reading really it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last. We'll catch you up on what federal officials are saying as well. A statement from the Greater Toronto Airports Authority, though, in the meantime, reads in part, we are monitoring the situation and we are in close contact with federal authorities. We have also requested additional police presence at Toronto Pearson. At this time, there is no impact to airport operations. The prime minister says that we are taking this extraordinarily seriously. Uh, he has been briefed by the National Security and Intelligence Advisor about the situation in Niagara. Niagara Falls. He says he's been in touch with U.S. officials, uh, as well as the Minister of Public Safety, Dominic LeBlanc, the RCMP, and CBSA. And he says they're fully engaged and providing all necessary support. A little bit closer to home, we're also hearing from Toronto Police. They tweeted this just a few minutes ago. They say due to today's incident at the Canada-U.S. border, they will be increasing directed patrols of uniformed officers throughout the city. Uh, police say this is out of an abundance of caution, and there are no known threats for the city of Toronto. We are hearing from the public safety minister, Dominic LeBlanc. He spoke to reporters a little while ago, and he calls this a very serious situation, one that remains fluid. Uh, he, too, says he's in contact with all Canadian officials, the RCMP, uh, American officials as well. And he, he did say a while ago that he would be having a, a call with Homeland Security. Uh, he also says his government continues to receive contradictory information and said to speculate on the origin until we have more information is simply not responsible. Let's get to what the White House is saying about this. The White House Press Secretary, Corrine Jean-Pierre, says U.S. President Joe Biden has also been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry and that he and his team are closely following developments. For a closer look at traffic restrictions and how difficult it is to get around those border crossings right now, let's bring in Adjua. Adjua, what are you seeing? I'm seeing traffic not getting through at all, obviously, because all these four bridges have been closed because of this ongoing police investigation involving that car explosion. I'll show you a live uh, look of the 405, which is the access that takes you to the Queenston-Lewiston Bridge. It is completely closed off uh, in its entirety from the QEW out towards Niagara Park Boulevard uh, because 
because they don't want traffic getting stuck at the border. As well, uh, you'll also find the QEW on Agribound also uh, shut down at Central Avenue. That takes you to the Peace Bridge and it's not accessible. Once again, once any of these bridges reopen, we'll let you know and any of these highways reopen, we'll also keep you in the know as well. I'll send it back to you. Adjwa, thank you for this. Uh, let's check in with our Kayla Williams now, who's keeping a really close eye on this breaking news story out of the Niagara region. Kayla, what can you tell us? Yeah, so Lena, of course, we know that this has been such a fluid situation over the last hour and a half or so. We've been hearing from officials, and initially we heard from Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc, as you noted, and he mentioned to us that he was able to brief Prime Minister Justin Trudeau just before question period. Uh, we know that initially at the time when Minister LeBlanc spoke to reporters, he did not want to uh, confirm as far as details when it came to injuries or fatalities. We now know sources have confirmed that two individuals inside of the vehicle uh, have been confirmed dead. And so now officials are treating this as a terror-related incident, but we are still waiting to hear whether or not this is in fact an isolated incident. And when the topic came about Canadian safety or s concerns of safety, Minister LeBlanc uh, was still uh, minimal when he responded to reporters earlier today. But here's more from the public safety minister, as well as Prime Minister Trudeau and OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt. Time uh, a piece of infrastructure as important to Canada and the United States, like a border crossing, sees this kind of violent a circumstance. It's a source of concern for the government of Canada and for the United States. So we're taking this circumstance very seriously. But to speculate on the origin of this particular circumstance, the reasons why this may have happened, until we have more accurate information, is simply not responsible. We are in close contact with U.S. officials and will continue to work closely with them. Uh, we will continue to be engaged. We will provide updates. Uh, updates I can give right now is there are four border crossings that are right now closed. The Rainbow Bridge, Whirlpool Bridge, Queenston Bridge, and Peace Bridge. Uh, additional measures are being uh, contemplated and activated at all border crossings across the country. Uh, we are taking this extraordinarily seriously. Anyone who's tra planning, uh, was planning on traveling across the border, uh, please uh, hold off on your travel plans. There's going to be a lot of traffic down there right now that's uh, going to be stacked up and queued. Delays will be extensive, I would suspect, uh, even when they do reopen the borders. And at this point, I don't have a timeline on when that will be. And as you just heard from OPP Sergeant Kerry Schmidt, it is hard to say or give a timeline as to when potentially the border crossings will be reopened, perhaps when the 405 will be reopened due to this incident. It took place just earlier this afternoon. So, of course, this is still a very ongoing situation. And due to the explosion, four bridges have now been closed. That includes the Lewiston-Queenston Bridge, Whirlpool, Rainbow Bridge, where the explosion took place, as well as Peace Bridge. Of course, this plays a big role when it comes to Canadian and Americans crossing the border. Timing of this, of course, is also to note, considering tomorrow marks the American Thanksgiving holiday long weekend. And officials on all levels of government have been briefed on this situation, including Premier Doug Ford, who put out a tweet in regards to the explosion that happened at the Rainbow Bridge. It reads, in part, the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls. Our provincial law enforcement is actively engaged in assessing the situation and they are working with local law enforcement and are providing support as required. New York State Governor Kathy Hochul also put out a tweet. Her most recent note in regards to the explosion says that at my direction, New York State Police is actively working with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force to monitor all points of entry to New York. I am traveling to Buffalo to meet with law enforcement and emergency responders and will update New Yorkers when more information becomes available. Uh, we've been showing live pictures on both the Canadian and American Buffalo side of the border in relation to where the explosion took place. Let's bring in CP24's crime analyst, Steve. Okay, we're, we're gonna check in with Steve in just a moment, but right now, Lena, that's the very latest as far as what we know from the official's standpoint. Of course, we've been noting too that this investigation has shifted now. They are viewing this as a terror-related incident. Mm -hmm. And at this point now, meetings and uh, officials on both sides of the border will be, of course, 
trying to determine whether or not this was an isolated incident. Yeah, a dynamic situation indeed. Uh, Kayla, thank you for this. We can also tell you there are media reports that every car coming into the Buffalo International Airport is being screened right now with bomb detecting dogs amid this heightened uh, screening and security in response to this incident at the Rainbow Bridge. There's another live shot, an incredibly dynamic scene there. Just check out that police presence. Uh, national security sources telling CTV News right now, government officials, they are operating under the assumption that this incident is terror related. It is important to note that it's unclear at this point if this explosion was intentional, but officials are working under that assumption. And there is a meeting of all security related organizations and departments happening now. Officials, as Kayla noted, are trying to determine if this was an isolated incident. We can also tell you the two people that were in the vehicle that exploded were declared dead on scene. We did hear from New York's governor, Kathy Hochul. Uh, she said that she's directed New York State Police alongside the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force to monitor all entry points into the state. Our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, saying we are taking this incredibly seriously. He says he has been briefed by the National Security and Intelligence Advisor about this situation. He also says that he and his team are in touch with U.S. officials. We also heard from the public safety minister, Dominic LeBlanc, who called this a very serious and very fluid situation. He, too, is in contact with all necessary individuals. I uh, said that he was going to be having a call with Homeland Security as well. And he says that his government continues to receive contradictory information. He even said that the information seems to be changing by the minute. So at this point, it's really unclear what the motive was behind this explosion. But again, two dead bodies were found in that vehicle that exploded, and that will certainly help investigators. We can also tell you all border crossings in the Niagara region have been closed in both directions. This after a vehicle exploded at the Rainbow Bridge. This is a multi-jurisdictional investigation. Officials on both sides of the border taking this very seriously. The FBI is involved and the RCMP is involved as well. Uh, we did touch base with former Toronto police officer Mark Mendelson, and he says the investigation into this blast is going to be a complicated one. First thing is identify that vehicle, identify the license plate, uh, try and find if there's any identification in the vehicle that is readable at this point. It, it sounds like it was quite an explosion. To try and identify the individual or individuals that were in the vehicle. In the backdrop of all this, it cannot be ignored that, you know, that every investigator is thinking about sort of the social and political temperature that we're facing right now in this country, in the U.S. and the Middle East. Let's pick up on what Mark was just talking about here, because the timing is important to note. This is happening right before the American Thanksgiving long weekend. It is considered one of the busiest travel times of the year, but it also comes as tensions continue to rise in the Middle East. There's been a lot of anger, a lot of emotion around that, and investigators are certainly keeping that in mind. Uh, the FBI did say that it was investigating this explosion, and we should mention that it took place on the U.S. side of the border. Border. Now, Americans on the Canadian side of the border say they're making plans just in case they're not able to return home. Take a listen to that. I'm actually from uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car is actually in New York right now. If I now open a sewer, I'll probably get the place to sleep over here. It's all, I can't, if I can't go home. We're not reading. Really yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last. And officials here at home are taking this very seriously. Airports are on high alert. Border crossings on high alert as well. Uh, we did receive a statement from the Greater Toronto Airports Authority. We'll read part of that to you. It says, we are monitoring the situation and are in close contact with federal authorities. We have also requested additional police presence at Toronto Pearson. Yeah. At this time, there is no impact to airport operations. Toronto police also on high alert this afternoon. They say due to today's 
incident at the Canada-U.S. border, they will be increasing directed patrols of uniformed officers throughout the city. Police also say this is out of an abundance of caution and there are no known threats for the city of Toronto. Let's get to what officials in the U.S. are saying. Again, this did happen on the American side of the border crossing point. We did hear from the White House. The press secretary there, Karine Jean-Pierre, says U.S. President Joe Biden has been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry. Uh, also goes on to say that he and his team are closely following these latest developments. Let's check in with our crime analyst, Steve Ryan. He is in the area as we speak. Uh, Steve, walk us through, first of all, what you're seeing where you are. Well, we are at the foot of the Rainbow Bridge, Lita, and it is eerily quiet here uh, this afternoon. Uh, people familiar with this area, with this part of uh, uh, the border crossings, know all too well how busy it can be. And given the fact that it is uh, the American Thanksgiving tomorrow, you would expect a lot of traffic crossing uh, this bridge, both to and from. And uh, it's quiet as quiet can be right now because the police have got that completely sealed off while the FBI conduct their investigation on the other side of the border. Us uh, Steve, we know that there are multiple reports that suggest two people inside that vehicle that exploded uh, were declared dead on scene. So Toronto, uh, so police rather, are working with uh, two bodies here. How will that shape this investigation? Well, any investigation that is conducted, you go in with an open mind. You go in with the perspective that uh, anything is possible, and you let the facts speak for themselves. So now. We've got facts, and that are that two people have died in that explosion. Now, the investigators will endeavor to figure out, was it intentional? Who are those people that were in that vehicle? Where did that vehicle come from? And what was the motive behind all of this? Again, big picture, let the facts speak for themselves. And once you have the facts, and then you can go on a working theory. And that could be such things as the holiday season in the States, the, the location, and the the uh, tensions in the Mideast. All of the things will be taken into consideration uh, before any determination is made. That's an effect you. All right, and Steve, we'll continue to check in with you. In fact, we'll check in with you in just a few minutes. That is Steve Ryan live in Niagara Falls. It is 3.55 right now, 5 degrees. You're watching Toronto's breaking news, CP24. We're going to take a quick break, but stay with us right here on CP24 as we follow major breaking news. All border crossings in the Niagara region, they are closed after a vehicle exploded at the Rainbow Bridge, and we can tell you two people were declared dead on scene. This is a multi jury jurisdictional investigation and national security sources rather telling CTV News government officials are operating under the assumption that this incident is terror related. Stay with us. We'll be right back. questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. Jurassic Quest is back and bigger than ever. See life-size animatronic dinosaurs, walking dinos, baby dinos, and so much more. Playing Hamilton starting December 1st and Mississauga starting December 8th. Tickets are flying fast. Buy in advance at JurassicQuest.com. You're suffering from depression, your disability claim has been denied, and now your employer threatens to fire you. Think this can't happen? Think again. My name is Aaron Waxman, and if your disability claim has been denied for any reason, call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Come on, Snow, let's go. Life's better with extra space. Space for family. Space for memories. Space for you. Access Storage. Try four weeks free. Details at accessstorage.ca. Live from Chuck's Roadhouse. Relief fandom. Song and charms are lucky. And when the puck drops, eyes go way up. And where we all wear blue. Ahem. <clears throat> blue? It's a Chucking Miracle! Chuck's Roadhouse! Here, every year could be our year! $4.18 ounce motion Canadian pints on Leafs games. Chuck's Roadhouse, food the way it ought to be. Price the way it used to be. 
Do you have questions about your employment rights? Ask a Lawyer is here for you. Each week, experts from employmentlawyer.ca answer your questions. Visit cp24.com slash askalawyer and watch Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on CP24. We begin with breaking news. An official with the Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center has confirmed there are fatalities in today's explosion on the Rainbow Bridge. CP24's Kayla Williams joins us with the latest details. And Kayla, we're learning more about those fatalities as well. Yeah, exactly. We now know that the two individuals inside that vehicle that exploded at the Rainbow Bridge were pronounced dead on scene. Now, as far as you noted, when it comes to the authorities that were at the medical management services at Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center in New York, they did note that one patient was taken to the hospital this morning at about 1130. Uh, the patient was believed to have tr been treated for non-life-threatening injuries, but we now know that there was also the two fatalities, the two deaths inside of the vehicle. Now, as far as details concerning those two people, of course, uh, this is such a fluid situation. And we are still working through uh, so many different pieces of information and we're still waiting on authorities to confirm some of those more specific details. But what we can tell you is that now following this explosion, we have heard from authorities on both sides of the borders uh, as far as this being a Canadian and U.S. joint effort. Uh, now following the explosion to the ripple effect of that has been road closures, bridge closing, bridge closures as well to four bridges in addition to uh, the Rainbow Bridge itself as well as heightened security now at Buffalo Airport. But here's more from authorities as well as government officials who have been briefed on this situation and take a listen to what they had to say. Time uh, a piece of infrastructure as important to Canada and the United States like a border crossing sees this kind of violent a circumstance. It's a source of concern for the government of Canada and for the United States. So we're taking this circumstance very seriously. But to speculate on the origin of this particular circumstance, the reasons why this may have happened, until we have more accurate information, is simply not responsible. We are in close contact with U.S. officials and will continue to work closely with them. Uh, we will continue to be engaged. We will provide updates. Uh, updates I can give right now is there are four border crossings that are right now closed. The Rainbow Bridge, Whirlpool Bridge, Queenston Bridge, and Peace Bridge. Uh, additional measures are being uh, contemplated and activated at all border crossings across the country. Uh, we are taking this extraordinarily seriously. Anyone who's tra planning, uh, was planning on traveling across the border, uh, please uh, hold off on your travel plans. There's going to be a lot of traffic down there right now that's uh, going to be stacked up and queued. Delays will be extensive, I would suspect, uh, even when they do reopen the borders. And at this point, I don't have a timeline on when that will be. Yeah, no exact timeline as to when these bridges as well as border crossings will potentially reopen. This is a live shot in New York, uh, in Niagara Falls, excuse me, this hour. As you can see, there's still a police presence at the border. Uh, we have been uh, talking to crews on the ground who have been speaking to local residents who live on both sides of the border. Some Americans who happen to have crossed into Canada prior to this explosion happening now stuck in Canada for for the foreseeable future. Uh, but here's a look at this map as far as the closed bridges following this explosion at Rainbow Bridge. Lewiston, Queenston Bridge is now closed in addition to Whirlpool, Rainbow itself, of course, and Peace Bridge. For how long? Of course, we don't have the answer to that just yet. We also know that the 405, uh, the highway that leads many Canadians to the U.S. Cr Canada border crossing is also shut down. Let's bring in CP24's Steve Ryan, who has been joining us live from New York, excuse me, not New York, in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side of things this hour. And so, Steve, you've been noting that from your vantage point where you are, it's been eerily quiet. Uh, talk to us about what you have been seeing, what you can tell us as far as being on the ground there, and what locals are saying to you, given that this transpired right at the U.S. border on the U.S. side of things. 
Well, things are very quiet, uh, Kayla, and uh, that, of course, is because the border is completely shut down. So the police have it completely uh, sealed off. Nobody's getting in or out uh, through that uh, border and the other three borders that are in the area as well. People that have been passing by have said uh, casually uh, before the news broke that there were two bodies inside of the explode, exploded vehicle, um, they were hoping and praying that uh, there was no injuries. But sadly, we do know now that there are two people um, that died as a result and that were found inside of that vehicle. So the big question for investigators right now will be, who are those people and where did that car come from? What were their intentions? And the biggest question will be, was this intentional or not? They are the questions that the FBI will endeavor to answer as part of their investigation. Absolutely, and we're hoping to get an update from officials, hopefully uh, as soon as possible. We do know we're expecting to hear from the Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown in relation to this incident. But Steve, just taking a look at the, the pictures from earlier this afternoon uh, of the damage, the extensive damage of this vehicle, it's one thing when a vehicle uh, collides into something, as you noted, whether or not this was intentional or not. But then there's the explosion element of this as well, resulting in two deaths. Yeah, and you make a very good point. And I think all of that led the uh, government officials to make the announcement that we heard from the minister earlier on talking about they were treating this incident as though it was a terror incident. And they're doing that not based on facts that were shared with us, but based on things such as you talked about. Vehicles don't typically explode on their own, and if they do, they don't cause that massive damage that we saw in this case. You've got the American Thanksgiving, you've got the location of this explosion, and mm -hmm. you've got the tensions in the Middle East. So all of that combined is circumstantial stuff that will cause the approach to be made the way it is. And then now once the facts are learned, then you can have a working theory based on the facts plus the circumstantial information that surrounds those facts. Certainly, and now we're hearing more of the ripple effect of what has transpired. Now learning that Buffalo Airport has closed their international flights after that explosion at the U.S. border. But as you were noting, that's fairly on par for when a situation like this happens at a border crossing. Yeah, that's right. And again, and that will be as a result of all those things that we just discussed, all those circumstantial things. Forget the facts, just the circumstantial stuff that is on its face. The borders will be closed, the airports will be under more scrutiny, and that'll continue until such time that they have a working theory whether or not this was in fact an act of terror or it was something else. Okay, that's CP24 crime analyst Steve Ryan joining us live from Niagara Falls. Steve, thanks for that. We'll be in touch. Again, as we noted too, due to the explosion, four of the bridges have been shut down indefinitely. We don't have an exact timeline as to when it could possibly be reopened. The 405 also being shut down. Lindsay, it's back over to you. Yeah, and as you say, Kayla, just such a developing situation here as we continue to learn more information, uh, even just uh, regards around this situation, this explosion that happened today. Meanwhile, former Toronto police officer Mark Mendelson says the investigation into the blast will be a complex one, of course. The first thing is identify that vehicle, identify the license plate, uh, try and find if there's any identification in the vehicle that is readable at this point. It, it sounds like it was quite an explosion. To try and identify the individual or individuals that were in the vehicle. In the backdrop of all of this, it cannot be ignored that, you know, that every investigator is thinking about sort of the social and political temperature that we're facing right now in this country, in the U.S. and the Middle East. And a witness recounted the moment a vehicle raced towards that border crossing and exploded. So we were walking up the road and we seen this car coming down towards the border. And he was flying over 100 miles an hour. There was a car in front of him. He swerved out, went in front of the car, hit the fence, went flying up into the air. He hit, I think there was an elevation part. He went up into the air and we just seen the fireball and that's all we could see. It was just covered in smoke everywhere. So the car was coming from the U.S. into Canada? towards Canada? Yes, it was going towards Canada, yes. And a statement from the Greater Toronto Airports Authority reads in part, we are monitoring the situation and are in close contact with federal authorities. We've also requested additional police presence at Toronto Pearson. At this time, there's no impact to airport operations. But Toronto Police Chief Myron Demke has also released a statement reading, the service regularly works with national and provincial law enforcement to ensure coordination and information sharing. Lines of communication between law enforcement agencies are open and active. 
And Toronto police say due to today's incident at the Canada-U.S. border, they will be increasing directed patrols of uniformed officers throughout the city. Police also say this is out of an abundance of caution and there are no known threats for the city of Toronto. Meanwhile, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says U.S. President Joe Biden has been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry and that he and his team are closely following developments. Okay, now for uh, developments on terms of the road closures around that area, we know a number of bridges heading into the U.S. are still closed, but we're going to check in with Adjua for a check on the roads to see what's happening uh, down by the border. Adjua? Yeah, it is uh, just a difficult situation for commuters that were trying to get across the border, as you know. Just to reiterate, Peace Bridge has originally been closed. I'll get to the 405, but the Peace Bridge originally remains closed because of the explosion and the investigation. Also, uh, the you'll find uh, the uh, Rainbow Bridge Queenston, Lewiston, and the Whirlpool Bridge also off limits because of the investigation. That does continue. What you're looking at, this, the 405, this is the bridge that does take you to Queenston, Lewiston. It is off limits. They've closed it down. They don't want cars getting caught in the backlog. As well, outside of camera view, we still are dealing with the QEW Fort Erie bound. It is shut down at Central Avenue. Uh, that is for an ongoing investigation that continues. They don't want cars getting caught up in the backlog. Once again, if any lanes are open, we'll let you know. I'll send it back to you, Lindsay. Okay, and we'll check in with you a bit, Adjo. Thank you so much for that. And, of course, we continue to follow that breaking news from Niagara Falls where we're following multiple reports that two people in the vehicle involved in that Rainbow Bridge explosion are dead. The FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and New York State Police are investigating after a vehicle blew up near a checkpoint earlier today. National security sources tell CTV News that government officials are operating under the assumption this incident is terror related. It is four, uh, just about 410, five degrees. You are watching CP24. We'll have more news on this breaking story right after the break. Stay with us. To a child in need, it's more than a gift. It's hope. Give to the CP24 Chum Christmas Wish by dropping off toys or donations to the Wish Warehouse in Mississauga or downtown at 299 Queen Street West or simply text WISH to 30333. Every kid deserves a smile this holiday season. Go to thewish.ca for more info. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Your Black Friday price is guaranteed at Visions Electronics. With incredible deals store-wide, your lowest price for a full 60 days or your money back. And you'll save even more when you pick up in-store. Plus, take up to three years to pay interest-free. See all the deals at visions.ca. Your time is now. You're ready for your next big step. Niagara College is a proven leader among Ontario colleges. Choose academic excellence. Choose experiential learning. Choose career success. Choose Niagara College today. Welcome back. We are continuing to follow breaking news today from Niagara Falls, where we are following multiple reports that two people in the vehicle involved in the Rainbow Bridge explosion are dead. Now, here's some pictures from the scene earlier today. The FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and New York State Police are investigating after a vehicle blew up near a checkpoint earlier today. Officials have conveyed to police sources that they should up their presence at likely terror targets. National security sources tell CTV News that government officials are operating under the assumption that this incident is terror related. However, they also say they haven't ruled out that the explosion was was the result of other means such as a medical event or reckless driving. Government sources also confirmed they have been told of the possibility that the driver was never on the actual Canadian side of this.
Meanwhile, all four border crossings between the Niagara region and New York have been closed as a precaution, and New York's governor says all entry points into New York are being monitored. That includes the Peace Bridge, the Rainbow Bridge, Queenston Lewiston Bridge, and Whirlpool Bridge. Vehicle exploded uh, at a border crossing point. Uh, we're receiving regular updates both from American authorities and the RCMP and the Border Services Agency. I was briefed by the president of the Canadian Border Services Agency. Uh, the Prime Minister and I will receive uh, further information uh, in the uh, coming moments. This is obviously a very serious situation. The Government of Canada is taking this situation extremely seriously. This is obviously a very serious situation in Niagara Falls. Uh, there was a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge crossing. I've been briefed by the NSIA and the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, CBSA, RCMP and Transport Canada are all fully engaged in providing the necessary support. There are a lot of questions and we are following up to try and get as many answers as rapidly as possible. Former Toronto Police Officer Mark Mendelson says the investigation into the blast will be a complex one. Talk about a multi-jurisdictional investigation. You're going to have the New York State Police. You're going to have the FBI involved. You're going to have alcohol, tobacco, and firearms from the U.S. You're going to have Homeland Security. You're going to have Canada Border Services, the OPP, and Niagara Regional. And all of them are going to play a part in this initial investigation. And Americans on the Canadian side of the border say they are making plans just in case they're unable to actually return home. I'm actually from uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car's actually in New York right now. Wow. If I now open a soon, I'll probably get the place to sleep over here. So I can't, if I can't go home... We're not reading really it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last. White House Press Secretary, meanwhile, Karine Jean-Pierre says U.S. President Joe Biden has been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry and that he and his team are closely following developments. Meanwhile, Toronto Police Chief Myron Demkew has released a statement reading the service regularly works with national and provincial law enforcement to ensure coordination and information sharing. Lines of communication between law enforcement agencies are open and active. And an official with the Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center confirms there are fatalities in today's explosion on the Rainbow Bridge. CP24's Kayla Williams joins us live with the details on that. And Kayla, as officials really try to differentiate between what might have happened here, the possibilities seem still to be endless at this point, but we do know a little bit more about those fatalities. Yeah, exactly. We do know. We can confirm that the two people have, that have been confirmed dead were inside the vehicle that exploded at the Rainbow Bridge earlier this afternoon. We're showing you live pictures now from the Niagara side of the border. Uh, CP24 Steve Ryan is there and has been giving us a point of view perspective from the grounds there. But as far as the intentionality behind this explosion, we still don't have that answer, Lindsay. Whether or not this was intentional or not, perhaps it was a medical emergency. Uh, we're still waiting to hear from officials that are piecing together all of the facts and information about this situation to provide to the public. But what we can tell you is that according to the emergency management services at Niagara Falls Mem Memorial Medical Center, there was also one individual who suffered non-life-threatening injuries that was brought into the hospital this morning after the explosion. So that is something that we're learning. Whether or not there are other people who were injured in this explosion, ex explosion excuse me, because when you take a look at the pictures, this was uh, quite the scene here. The damage is no doubt extensive uh, right at the Canada-US border. I also want to note too that the explosion happened on the US side of the border. And now, hours later, we're learning the ripple effect of it. Four bridges have now been closed that access southern Ontario to New York at the U.S.-Canada border. Those bridges include uh, the Rainbow Bridge, where this incident happened itself, as well as Whirlpool Bridge, Lewiston-Queenston Bridge, as well as Peace Bridge. And now we're also learning that the Buffalo Airport has closed its international uh, section. All flights have been shut as far as coming and going following this explosion at the U.S. border. So that is out of abundance of caution following this incident. But of course, we're still hearing that, according to officials, they're not ruling that this could have been 
uh, an accident, that this was not intentional whatsoever. But of course, out of an abundance of caution, they are still operating under the assumption that this incident is terror related. And at this time, meetings are happening in real time to determine if this was in fact an isolated incident. So of course, a very fluid situation. We know that according to Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc, he says that Canada is taking this very seriously. There's no doubt that officials on both sides of the border have been in constant communication. They are helping each other in this joint effort to piece together just what exactly took place leading up to the explosion. Of course, we know that the vehicle coming from the Canada side when the explosion happened at the Canada-US border. But of course, what we do know, the location of it, the amount of cameras is quite vast. So there's no doubt that that is a part, a big piece to this investigation with officials. So we will continue to bring you the very latest. We're also expecting to hear from the Buffalo mayor, Byron Brown, at some point on the explosion. This is a live look from the U.S. side. As you can see, still a very heavy police presence involved. Now into the late afternoon hours, the road closures still in effect. The bridges, the bridge closures still in effect with no estimated timeline as to when they could potentially be reopened. And of course, the timing of this too is also to be worth noting, considering tomorrow marks the start of the American Thanksgiving long weekend, tomorrow marking Thanksgiving itself for Americans. So those who typically go and cross on both sides of the border around this time of year, this is known to be a very popular time of year when people will be crossing. That won't be a possibility, at least for today. And we don't have an exact timeline as to when the, the bridges will possibly be reopened. Lindsay. Yeah, such a busy time for travelers. And of course, now police also investigating the possibility that that car was never even on the Canadian side. So, so many possibilities here, Kayla. I appreciate you helping us break it down. Thank you. That's CP24's Kayla Williams. No problem. Time now is 419 and 4 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. We are following breaking news. Of course, that Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls is closed to traffic following an explosion. We will bring you all the updates that we know so far after the break. Stay with us. Crave has the series you want. This is unbelievable. Right now, get 40% off Crave annual plans and start streaming groundbreaking hits. We play an ugly game. Including the new season of The Gilded Age. One will be the winner. Exclusive originals. This team will never lose again. Plus, the only place to stream all seasons of Friends. How you doing? Get 40% off Crave annual plans. Learn more at crave.ca slash Black Friday. It's the Jeep All Out Clear Out event, which means more trails to blaze, more challenges to meet, more sights to discover. Get into a Jeep Wrangler, the most capable Wrangler ever. Or Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. Jeep All Out Clear Out is here. Time to go all out. Get up to 10% off MSRP with up to $8,200 in discounts on Jeep Grand Cherokee. My husband and I were shocked that our new roof started leaking only two months after it was replaced. So we decided to hire AGM Renovations to redo our roof. Their neighbors highly recommended them. We're so amazed at the service and workmanship we experienced with AGM. Now we have a new roof done right and peace of mind with AGM's unlimited warranty. We would recommend AGM to anyone. AGMRenovations.com Book now and get $3,000 off. Tonight at 6, ringing in the holiday rush. Last year we ran out of trees. Unwrapping the rising cost. A lot of people are buying early this year. Of Christmas trees. Tonight on CTV News at 6. Closed captioning of this CP24 program is brought to you by Presler Injury Lawyer. Injured in a car accident? The number to call is 1-800-JUSTICE for a free consultation and our no-win, no-fee policy. Oh, welcome back. It's now time for a detailed look at your weather forecast. And obviously today has been fairly cloudy. It was damp in the morning with some drizzle, a few showers. Now we're dry, breezy, and a little bit cooler. Temperatures peaked at around 6 to 8 degrees today. Now we're anywhere from 3 to 5. And in terms of the winds, they're still coming in from the northwest. Still around 40 kilometer an hour wind gusts, so it still is breezy. And we're still locked in with lots of cloud, although there is some sunny breaks. But unfortunately, the sun is setting. As we get through... Uh, 
uh, Wednesday night and into Thursday, sorry, I forgot to update this, uh, we will start to see a lot of cloud cover into uh, Thursday morning. And uh, we're not going to see much in terms of active weather potential. There is a weak cold front moving through. Not going to produce much in terms of active weather, but it will produce a wind shift. So temperatures tomorrow will still be generally in the mid to upper single digits, at least midday. And then into the evening and overnight, we get into a cooler northwesterly wind. And the end result will be some lake effect snow that develops off of Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. Very localized. This is not going to be widespread. It's going to be extremely isolated in the snow belts southeast of Georgian Bay and Lake Huron. We escape with maybe a few flurries. But the bigger story will be the temperatures. We go from around 6 to 7 for Thursday afternoon, around 0 for the afternoon high for Friday. As we get into Saturday, the lake effect snow, anything left over will be gone. In the morning, we're left with lots of sun. By the afternoon, a mix of sun and cloud. By the evening, increase in clouds. As we get into Sunday, we have the opportunity for flurries mixing with showers, at least in the downtown core close to the lake shore. Just north of the lake shore, away from the lake, away from the warmer waters, it will be cool enough for primarily flurries. But it's not going to produce much in terms of uh, accumulations. We might see a light dusting locally, and that's about it. This is not a strong system. This is not a storm system moving in for Sunday. Just a weak disturbance. As we get into Monday, there will once again be lake effect snow, generally east-southeast of Georgian Bay, generally north of Barrie, up towards Bracebridge, Gravenhurst. Um, and that's going to be the story for Monday. Once we get through Monday and into Tuesday, some of those flurries will at least try to wander southward and move in towards this downtown core, but it uh, doesn't look like anything overly menacing. So right now, uh, Lindsay, fair, fair amount of cloud overhead. We're still dry, obviously much drier than yesterday, mm -hmm. 24 hours ago. It was very damp. It was drizzly. It was wet. Now it's dry, breezy, but a little bit cooler. Yeah, definitely prefer today over yesterday. Chris, thanks so much for that. You got it. Okay, now let's turn back to our breaking news, our top story today, and that is an explosion on Rainbow Bridge at the Canada-U.S. border, and we've been following this very closely. For more now, let's bring in CTV's public safety analyst and former OPP commissioner, Chris Lewis. It's good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lindsay. So we know some of the latest developments are that two people have been confirmed dead. Those two people were in the vehicle that exploded. Another person sent to hospital with injuries, uh, but still so much that investigators are looking over in terms of where this vehicle even was, uh, maybe a potential motive if it was intentional or whether it was some kind of accident. Uh, where do you think investigators are at now and where are their heads at, I guess, in terms of this investigation? I'd be surprised if they didn't have a fairly good idea whether this was an intentional act, and if so, is it related to terrorism? I mean, that's the first thing that comes to everybody's minds, and of course, the FBI and others will be looking at that as a possibility. Um, but I don't think it's all that likely myself. I may be wrong, but if it was a suicide bombing, it probably would have been a little bit bigger explosion. There probably would have been two people in the car going 80 miles an hour through the city. Um, and it would have hit some target-rich environment. That These things just aren't adding up from my perspective. Uh, so if it was intentional, it was a criminal act, but not necessarily based on politics and religion and trying to scare the public and all the things that terrorism is all about. And it could be an accident. It could be an impaired driver. It could be somebody driving recklessly. Who knows? But uh, time will tell. Time will tell. And despite those thoughts, you know, we know that the Buffalo, at least on the Buffalo side, uh, there's a lot of caution being exercised. The Buffalo airport screening cars has uh, closed international flights. We know a Jewish community center in Buffalo has also uh, closed for the remainder of the weekend just in case. Is it still kind of maybe a good idea to be cautious just in case there, there is still some risk to public safety on both sides of the border? Absolutely. I mean, caution is a, a really important when it comes to public safety. And so, I mean, with those, those three bridges being busy on a holiday weekend in the U.S., they're always busy anyway, you know, tons of traffic. Uh, they don't want to take a chance that this isn't bigger than it might be and that it might not, there may not be another threat. If it is a terrorist act, to use that example, once again, I don't believe it is, but time will tell, um, then are there others involved? There'd be a big investigation into that. And is there other threats? To have targeted attacks in two or three locations in a short period of time is not an unusual thing in the terrorism world. But once again, was it even a deliberate act to begin with? And if it wasn't a deliberate act, I mean, what are some of the reasons that an explosion like that might have? It looked quite big. I'm no expert on uh, vehicles and how they could potentially explode maybe during a crash. 
Um, I'm not. I, I'm not saying you are either. But I mean, what are the other the other possibilities here? Especially given now we're starting to hear from witnesses. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit more footage of the scene right after the crash with with a lot of fire. Um, what are the possibilities there if it wasn't intentional? Well, you know, I've seen a lot of crashes, of course, in my years in the OPP, and not that often does the gas tank rupture in a way that it sub subsequently explodes. But gasoline is a very highly explosive substance. Gas fumes and gasoline can cause one big fireball. So uh, the right collision, the right time and place, and that gas tank ruptures and there's some sort of spark or something to ignite it, you can have exactly what we have seen there. And then again, that it may be something bigger than that. And I mean, we've had cases where people committed suicide with, with uh, propane tanks in their car and gasoline cans in their car. I mean, that's it, the human mind is a scary thing at times. So it could be something like that. It could be a million different things. And so authorities, in the meantime, are taking this very safe, cautious approach, investigating it like it was a terrorist act. And if it's proven not to be down the road, so be it. At least they'll know. Okay, and just lastly, uh, I mean, the the timing of this can't be understated, right? Um, the fact that it is right before the American Thanksgiving, a very busy travel time for a lot of Canadians and Americans, especially over those borders, uh, that has to be taken into consideration as well. Absolutely. I mean, there's a huge impact on public safety. There's a huge impact to the motoring public right now. Uh, but people are just going to have to be patient and realize that it's in their best interest that authorities get to the bottom of this, take the cautionary approach, not further jeopardize any lives. You imagine if they left a bridge open and they continued to you know, have great traffic and then some other event occurred. Uh, so in the meantime, people are just going to have to put their smiley face on and, and hope for the best as time moves on. Okay, that's CTV's public safety analyst and former OPP commissioner, Chris Lewis. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lindsay. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Time now is 429 and 4 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. and We're following breaking news at the Canada and U.S. border. Here's a live look at the pictures from the Rainbow Bridge after an explosion today. We'll have more on that coming up after the break. Stay with us. Daddy, number one in the GTA, is now the official real estate brokerage of the Toronto Raptors. Let's bring it home together. You have anxiety about working in the office, anxiety about COVID, and were diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. And still, your insurance company denies your disability claim. My name is Aaron Waxman, and if your disability claim has been denied for any reason, call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Come on, Snow, let's go. Now I'm in my 50s, I'm all about making the right choices, like eating right and staying healthy. And another thing I can choose is how to look after my family if anything ever happened to me. Welcome to Seniors Choice. How can I help? Hi, I'd like a quick quote, please. If you're a Canadian resident, age 50 to 80, you can choose the right amount of coverage for you and your family up to $250,000. That kind of money would help a lot. You can choose to apply over the phone now in just minutes with no medicals or blood tests. Just a few health and lifestyle questions. Wow, that easy. Depending on the coverage you choose, it would be as little as $14.88 a month. That's just 49 cents a day. That's less than I thought. And that money could help my family cover my funeral costs support my husband's retirement planning, or even pay off loans, I'll do it. Seniors Choice are the number one direct choice for Canadians over 50. To get a free, no obligation quote, call one of our trusted insurance advisors today at 1-844-834-8503 or visit seniorschoice.ca.
We begin with breaking news. An official with the Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center has confirmed there are fatalities in today's explosion on the Rainbow Bridge. And CP24's Kayla Williams is standing by with the latest details on that. Kayla? And Lindsay, we know that the two individuals inside of that vehicle at the time it exploded at the Rainbow Bridge have been confirmed dead on scene, according to authorities there on the ground. Now, this took place earlier this afternoon. And following that, you're looking at a video of footage that was sent in moments after the explosion. You can see the dark plumes of smoke as well as uh, fire on the ground there. Just uh, devastation, truly, moments after this explosion. And following the uh, explosion on the Rainbow Bridge, that has now caused a, a ripple effect as far as bridge closures. There have been three other bridges in addition to uh, the Rainbow Bridge that are now shut down for the foreseeable future. We don't have an exact time Timeline as to when these border crossings, which of course connect Southern Ontario and New York together, uh, when they'll possibly be reopened. The 405, which is the highway that allows people to get to the U.S., is also closed at the moment. Whirlpool Bridge, Lewiston, Queenston, Rainbow, where the explosion took place, as well as Peace Bridge, now closed for the foreseeable future. And national security sources have told us now that government officials have been operating as this incident being terror related uh, and they're working to determine whether or not this was an isolated incident. Now, the point in this uh, developing story that we are still working on is whether or not this explosion, this vehicle uh, exploding and crashing was intentional or not. We still don't have that information. Uh, the FBI joint terrorism team along with OPP and Canadian officials are working in a joint effort for this and we also heard from Canadian officials in regards to this situation. Here's more from uh, safety excuse me, Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc, as well as the Prime Minister earlier today. Evolving situation, uh, information is coming uh, into Canadian authorities from their American counterparts, uh, literally minute by minute. Um, and we don't think it's, it's helpful uh, or responsible to speculate uh, on that sort of detail. What our job at this moment is, is to assure all Canadians that their security and safety is obviously our paramount consideration. Uh, we're doing that work as we always do on a minute by minute basis with our American counterparts. We are in close contact with U.S. officials and will continue to work closely with them. Uh, we will continue to be engaged. We will provide updates. Uh, updates I can give right now is there are four border crossings that are right now closed. The Rainbow Bridge, Whirlpool Bridge, Queenston Bridge and Peace Bridge. Uh, additional measures are being uh, contemplated and activated at all border crossings across the country. Uh, we are taking this extraordinarily seriously. I want to begin by just expressing my, my deep condolences to those impacted, those injured, potential fatalities in the incident that happened uh, very recently on the Rainbow Bridge, the crossing between Canada and the U.S. I want to thank the first responders for their work. And uh, again, I want to ensure that Canada is doing everything we can to provide assistance and support both in the investigation and uh, to those that are impacted. I just got off the phone with my colleagues down at the U.S. Border uh, Protection uh, um, Agency in Niagara Falls. On the, they are on site at the Rainbow Bridge waiting for updates from the FBI and the ongoing investigation that's going on on their side of the bridge at Rainbow. Uh, in the interim, we have now shut down Highway 405, which is a feeder off of the QEW just past St. Catharines, which leads to the Queenston-Lewiston Bridge. That uh, border crossing, uh, as, it, as well as the Peace Bridge, down at Fort Erie at the bottom end of the QW are both closed. And all of these closures, again, we don't have an exact timeline as to when they will reopen. It's also important to note, too, the timing of all of this with the uh, American Thanksgiving set for tomorrow, of course, and it starts the long weekend over there, which typically means traffic on the Canada-U.S. border. I want to bring in CP24's crime analyst Steve Ryan, who is live for us in Niagara Falls. And Steve, uh, you noted from your perspective, it's been relatively quiet where you are right now, but that's also due to the fact that uh, police and officials on the ground have closed off the perimeter and the area closest to where the explosion took place. 
Yeah, that's right. And this is all being done uh, out of an abundance of caution. As uh, we've been reporting, we heard the uh, Minister of Public Safety, I believe, say that uh, they were uh, treating this as though uh, it was an act of terror. Now, that is being done based on circumstantial information, and that is things such as the American uh, Thanksgiving happening, the location as to where this explosion took place, the tensions in the Middle East. Of course, all that combined will cause the authorities to treat it this way, but there are no facts to support that yet. And what I mean by that is the facts always dictate the course of an investigation and the conclusion of an investigation. And that'll be part of what the FBI investigators are going to figure out. Was this an intentional act or not? That will determine the working theory as to what may have taken place. Until they determine that, they can go under this assumption that this was an act of terror, close down the borders, check the airports, all that is protocols. But that is not to say that this was in fact an act of terror until such time that they have hard evidence. So that would be, was it intentional? The people that were involved, what were their intentions as well being in the vehicle? Where did it come from? We still don't know any of that information. That'll all come as the investigation unfolds. It's fluid, of course, but until such time, as the minister said, they'll treat it as, under the assumption that it was an act of terror until they learn that it wasn't, and then they can scale things back. Yeah, certainly. And of course, we know that uh, out of an abundance of caution, the Buffalo airport now has closed their international flights following this explosion. How important will it be for uh, the OPP and other Canadian officials to uh, give a, an assistance, a helping hand in this investigation to American authorities and the FBI? Well, the FBI are the ones that are going to have most of the answers. So any assistance from law enforcement on our side of the border will come at the request of the FBI because they're the ones that are getting the facts on the ground on the other side of the border here, and then they'll reach out to our authorities, whether that be the OPP, Niagara Region, or even the RCMP, to assist if, in fact, that vehicle came from our side uh, of the border. But we still don't know that. This is all just acting on assumptions until such time there are facts. And the only facts that we have right now is that there was an explosion and that two people have died. Everything else is being assumed until such time that they get more information. Hey, CP24, Steve Ryan reporting for us live uh, in Niagara Falls. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so there you have it. That is the very latest from Niagara. And Steve, of course, a very fluid and developing situation hours after this explosion at the Rainbow Bridge. Two confirmed deaths, two individuals inside of the vehicle that exploded right at the U.S.-Canada border crossing. Lindsay, it's back over to you for now. Okay, Kayla, thanks so much for that. And as we continue to follow this breaking news, we're going to bring in national security expert or expert rather, Anthony Seaboyer, uh, for more on the security risks surrounding this right now. Uh, Anthony Seaboyer, good to have you, first of all. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So in terms of this investigation, it is ongoing. We've seen a lot of, um, you know, government offices, for example, the Buffalo Airport, uh, a Jewish community centre in Buffalo, closing out of an abundance of caution, uh, a little less so on the Canadian side of things. What's your take so far on, on the security kind of around this situation? I think it's great that the precautions are taken very fast. Uh, both sides are taken very seriously, the Canadian side as well. Um, there is now uh, some reports coming out that the vehicle may have not actually entered from the Canadian side, but actually entered from the U.S. side. Again, these are very early reports. There's uh, different reporting on this, that the vehicle may have even been uh, in a casino close by on the U.S. side before. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, what possibility there even was for the Canadian side to prevent this from happening. Uh, but so far, what we're seeing is that both sides are taken extremely cautious and taking seriously, cooperating on finding out who's behind this and if this is a terror attack or not. And as you say, so many conflicting reports coming out. We originally heard that that vehicle was coming from Canada into the United States. Now most reports are saying it probably wasn't, as you say, even uh, on the Canadian side of things. There's also uh, uncertainty around how many people were in that vehicle that exploded. So when there's so much going on and it's still so new, still so fluid, so many conflicting reports, I mean, what do you think is going through the minds of investigators and security officials taking in all this information? The key concern clearly is to prevent further attacks. So they want to identify first, is this a terrorist attack? What was the intention? If it was a terrorist attack, who's behind this, uh, who has planned this, who has funded this, who has trained those involved in this? So the primary concern is prevent further attacks and also identify, is this part of a larger scheme that's potentially attacking other border crossings? That's why we're seeing the closures. So that's the, the primary concern that I think is on the minds right now. 
Some experts have been talking about, you know, this, the current situation right now really across the world when it comes to what's happening in the Middle East. People, you know, tensions are high. Um, people are feeling a lot of emotions. Uh, do you think that's still being considered? You know, it's not even clear yet whether this explosion was intentional, but do you think the state of the world is really being considered here when it comes to what happened today? Totally. That's what, of course, security institutions look at when they estimate, you know, what level of security uh, is necessary on a day like this. So this is, as as we heard, clearly in the beginning of the uh, of a, the, the time of the year where the most travel is happening on the U.S. side around Thanksgiving. So this would be a prime target. Um, not maybe so much today, more on the weekend. This is, raises questions if this is really intentional and who planned this and how professional this attack was, if it was an attack. Uh, but certainly that is on the mind of investigators and on the mind of those deciding what security measures to implement now. What are your thoughts on the fact that there's been no real confirmation on whether there's still a risk to public safety? Obviously, uh, many bridges crossing into the U.S. Are, are closed right now. Highways around the area are closed. People are being turned away, uh, being kept away from that area. So obviously, there's a potential risk to public safety uh, while police still investigate. What do you make about that? Well, I think this is necessary precaution, security precaution. It's very difficult uh, in this day and age uh, to identify connections, to identify communication of actors, particularly in this case. Uh, from what I hear, the registered owner of the vehicle has been identified, but it's not clear who was in the vehicle, how many people were in the vehicle. So it's very difficult to uh, to make sure that no further attacks are part of this. So that's why we're seeing the precautions. I think it's good that way. Okay. Anthony Seabor, national security expert, I appreciate you joining us today as we break down this breaking news and developing story. Thank you. Thank you. Time now is 443 and 4 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24, and we'll have more news for you coming up right after the break. Stay with us. TSN has a Black Friday deal everyone can cheer about. Incredible. Stream a full year of the biggest moments in sports for 40% off. It's going to be a great celebration. The Super Bowl. This is unbelievable. World Juniors. Raptors. Regional NHL. It's showtime. The Great Cup. Euro 2024 and so much more. You'd be crazy to change the channel. And CSN Plus is also included with your subscription. Sign me up for this. Subscribe now for 40% off a year of TSN. Offer ends November 28th. Terms apply. You're in debt. It happens. You're overwhelmed. We get it. You need a solution. We have it. For decades, we've helped thousands of people take control over their lives. Call us for a free consultation today. At Bergel McGenzie, we know that an accident doesn't just affect the injured person. It affects their entire family. We'll listen and help you understand your rights. We'll treat you with respect and compassion. And we'll fight to get you the compensation you deserve. As if you were family. For almost 50 years, Bergel McGenzie has recovered hundreds of millions of dollars for injured clients and their families. Let our family take care of your family. Bergel McGenzie, 416 Debt. It's hard to deal with. It's overwhelming. It's stressful. Collection calls getting you down? We'll deal with all your creditors. Rebuild your financial future with David Sklar & Associates. Call us today for a free consultation. A car explosion shuts down the Canada-U.S. border across Niagara. There are a lot of questions. Then a Toronto family's hope for the Israel-Hamas hostage deal. The unknown is what kills me. On CTV News at 6. <laughs> Amazing Race is back, and this time it's bigger than ever. Go! A new episode of The Amazing Race, tonight at 9.37 Mountain on CTV. And we continue to follow breaking news from Niagara Falls today, where we are following multiple reports that two people in the vehicle involved in the Rainbow Bridge explosion are dead. Now, the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and New York State Police are investigating after a vehicle blew up near a checkpoint earlier today. Officials have conveyed to police forces they should up their presence at likely terror targets. National security sources tell CTV News government officials are operating under the assumption that this incident is terror related. However, they also say they haven't ruled out that the explosion was the result of other means such as a medical event or a reckless driver. Government sources also confirm they have been told of the possibility that the driver was never actually on the Canadian side as previously reported. 
Now, all four border crossings between the Niagara region and New York have been closed as a precaution, and New York's governor says all entry points yes. into New York are being monitored. That includes the Peace Bridge, Rainbow Bridge, Queenston Lewis Bridge, and Whirlpool Bridge. Vehicle exploded uh, at a border crossing point. Uh, we're receiving regular updates both from American authorities and the RCMP and the Border Services Agency. I was briefed by the president of the Canadian Border Services Agency. Uh, the Prime Minister and I will receive uh, further information uh, in the uh, coming moments. This is obviously a very serious situation. The Government of Canada is taking this situation extremely seriously. This is obviously a very serious situation in Niagara Falls. Uh, there was a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge crossing. I've been briefed by the NSIA and the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, CBSA, RCMP and Transport Canada are all fully engaged in providing the necessary support. There are a lot of questions and we are following up to try and get as many answers as rapidly as possible. And former Toronto Police Officer Mark Mendelson says the investigation into this blast will be a complex one. Talk about a multi-jurisdictional investigation. You're going to have the New York State Police. You're going to have the FBI involved. You're going to have alcohol, tobacco, and firearms from the U.S. You're going to have Homeland Security. You're going to have Canada Border Services, the OPP, and Niagara Regional. And all of them are going to play a part in this initial investigation. And Americans on the Canadian side of the border say they are making plans just in case they're not able to return home. I'm actually from uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car is actually in New York right now. If I now open it soon, I'll probably get the place to sleep over here. It's all, I can't, if I can't go home. We're not really going to do Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to last. And White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says U.S. President Joe Biden has been briefed on the vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge port of entry and that he and his team are closely following developments. Meanwhile, Toronto Police Chief Myron Demkew has also released a statement today reading, the service regularly works with national and provincial law enforcement to ensure coordination and information sharing. Lines of communication between law enforcement agencies are open and active. And a statement from the Greater Toronto Airports Authority reads, in part, we are monitoring the situation and are in close contact with federal authorities. We have also requested additional police presence at Toronto Pearson. At this time, there is no impact, though, to airport operations. Now, Toronto police say due to today's incident at the Canada-U.S. border, they will be increasing directed patrols of uniformed officers throughout the city. Police also say this is out of an abundance of caution and there are no known threats for the city of Toronto. Okay, it's 4.50 now. We will switch gears and take a look at the forecast with our meteorologist, Chris Potter. Chris, a better day out there today than yesterday. Yeah, obviously drier. We started off with drizzle, a few showers. It was kind of a damp start to the day, and the clouds still lingered through much of the afternoon. Although there, there were some sunny breaks, we didn't get into complete sunshine, I'm afraid. And now that we're at this hour, the sun is obviously setting. As we get through the rest of this evening and into tonight and into the day tomorrow, uh, not much will change. We will start the day with quite a bit of cloud cover overhead. Still a lot of cloud cover across the region for the afternoon, but will remain dry. As we get through Thursday night and into Friday, that's when the winds begin to shift. They become briefly more northwesterly, and that will allow some lake effect snow, extremely isolated, extremely localized to develop southeast of Georgian Bay in the vicinity of, I would say, Angus, Stainer, Borden, maybe Barry, uh, maybe the North 400. That's going to be during the morning and early afternoon. So it's not going to be a significant weather event. But if that's where you're headed, obviously be, be prepared for uh, the potential for whiteouts and um, some obviously uh, accumulating snow on the roadways. Uh, the rest of the region, including the GTA, will escape with mostly cloud cover and maybe the odd snowflake. But obviously it's going to be much cooler. Highs around 6 to 7 for Thursday and around minus 1 to 0 for Friday. As we get into Saturday, the lake effect snow, anything left over will be going 
gone. We'll le we're left with increasing clouds. We'll basically get back into a mix of sun and cloud through the afternoon. By the late evening and overnight, we'll become overcast as the next system moves in. This one, not a strong system, but enough to give us flurries and maybe some showers, at least in the downtown core by the lakeshore by the afternoon. But it will predominantly be flurries in areas north of the lakeshore. In terms of accumulations, maybe a light dusting to a centimeter at most. As we get into Monday, lake effect snow once again takes over east southeast this time of Georgian Bay, uh, just north of Barry. Aurelia is one of the uh, the pinpoints at this point, um, but it does look like we'll escape with mostly cloud cover and maybe a few wet flakes. As we get into Tuesday, the winds shift a bit, giving us a few flurries moving in towards the city limits, but once again, no real threat of accumulations. And that's a full check on your weather forecast. A little bit breezy right now, a little bit cooler than what it was earlier today, uh, but all, overall, not a bad evening. Well, Chris, well, some of the big problems happening out through Niagara Falls uh, because of that multi-jurisdictional investigation. Uh, the Rainbow Bridge remains closed following that car explosion which occurred. So if you're trying to make your way in and around the area, it's going to be a little bit of a headache. They've also had to shut down a couple of other bridges. I will mention them. The Peace Bridge, the Queenston-Lewiston Bridge, and the Whirlpool Bridge also not accessible. Again, no estimated time of when this investigation is going to wrap up. And it's impacting a lot of other things, a lot of other routes. We have the 405 completely shut down in either direction. This is the route that does take you to the Queenston-Lewiston Bridge. They're just trying to get cars to avoid it. As well, you'll find uh, the QEW, Fort Erie Bound, shut down at Central Avenue, and that is also because they don't want cars accessing the Peace Bridge. I will show you my cameras. We do have problems uh, back in the city. This is the eastbound 401 in the collectors at Young. Crews on scene of a collision. It does have the right lane blocked. And out there, Brock Road, looks like problems in the distance. This is the eastbound 401 into Pickering at Brock Road by the right lane blocked with another crash. I'll send it back to you. The CP24 traffic report is brought to you by CapitalDirect.ca. The Grey Cup champion Alouettes got to celebrate with their fans this afternoon. People lined the streets of Montreal to celebrate Sunday's thrilling win over the Blue Bombers. It was a long road to the top for the Alouettes, who in February didn't even have an owner. This is the first Grey Cup parade in the city since 2010 and their eighth championship in franchise history. And some Canadian astronauts got new assignments today. Joshua Kutrick will be the next Canadian astronaut to live and work on the International Space Station as part of the Starliner 1 mission, which is expected to be launched in 2025. He will become the first Canadian astronaut to be part of NASA's commercial crew program. Now, during his mission, he will conduct science experiments and technology demonstrations. And Jenny Gibbons has been assigned as a Canadian backup astronaut for Artemis II, the first crewed mission to the moon in over 50 years. For me to have the opportunity to support that crew in whatever they need um, will be exceptional. I will help develop the procedures that that crew is going to be using. Future crews will be using on the surface of the moon. Um, I will be acting as a crew test subject for anything from launch to splashdown and landing. And I will act as a Capcom. So I'll be speaking to that crew and provide the connection between the ground team here on Earth with the mission around the moon. So I'm incredibly proud and grateful and just excited. I'm excited for what what's next, what this means for Canada. Just speaking personally, I come from a test flying background, so to fly on the first operational flight of a vehicle is something that's very special to me, but I also think it's very special for our country. We are, again, right where we want to be, and that is to say we're on the leading edge of, of developing new technologies with NASA, doing new things, building, designing, testing new vehicles. That's where we want to be. It's good for our country, and I'm just proud to, to be there uh, on Canada's behalf. Artemis II, NASA's first moon mission in over 50 years, is scheduled to launch in November of 2024. Time now is 4.55 and 4 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24, and we are following breaking news today. The Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls is closed to traffic following an explosion. We will bring you all of the updates we know so far after the break on Live at 5. Stay with us. Yum, 104.5. Today's best music and your favorite throwbacks. With Marilyn Dennis and Jamar in the morning. I say I used to be young. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app. I am today. And I'm a limited time offer. 
Jump out of bed and face me. Rested, ready, and focused. Rise to shine. We all like to feel in control, especially when it comes to family, housing, vacation, and education. A rich life means different things to the different people we all are. Sometimes it's just the flexibility to do what we feel is important. If you're ready to make improvements in your life, a FlexiLine can help you do that. Borrowing to invest in yourself and your life for now and your future. Could you use 80,000, 180, or even 1.8 million? Call 1-800-NEW-CAPITAL to see what's available to you. CapitalDirect.ca Moisture enters your basement through porous concrete walls and floors. DMX One Step 2.0 creates an air gap under your floors, allowing the moisture to evaporate. DMX One Step 2.0, no mold, no cold. Jackie P here, and I'm looking for winners because winners are wanted to play guaranteed jackpots. A new series of games with guaranteed winners every draw. Like Merry Millions with three top prizes of $1 million. You get a million, you get a million, you get a million. Winner, Ganyo. Best part is it's guaranteed. So hurry up and play Merry Millions in store today for your chance at three top prizes to be Ontario's next millionaire, plus many other prizes. into BetMGM Casino, and you're entering a huge library full of exclusive games. Games you won't find anywhere else. Looking for jackpots? Right this way. You'll always find someone ready to give you a hand. Or some dice. Your favorite game is waiting for you. On BetMGM Casino. It's the Black Friday sale in Leon's. Save up to 50% on select furniture. Save up to... At Diamond and Diamond, we can't prevent an accident. But we can prevent it from ruining your life. Our team will ensure you get the care and guidance to get you through this difficult time. Call the team at Diamond and Diamond. And get Canada's largest personal injury firm working for you. The next Lotto 649 Gold Ball Jackpot is a big one. It's a massive $40 million. Imagine the possibilities. Plus the classic $5 million jackpot. That's two jackpots on every ticket. The Lotto 649 Classic Jackpot and the growing Gold Ball Jackpot. Two chances to find your possible. What does it mean to be driven? It's when passion becomes purpose. So make it happen in the newly redesigned Hyundai Elantra. We make WA. You drive it. And we continue to follow breaking news from the border. The FBI is investigating an explosion at the Rainbow Bridge crossing near Niagara Falls. That's right, a car explosion. All border crossings in the area remain closed. Multiple reports say two people inside the vehicle that exploded died on scene. And for the very latest developments, let's go live to CP24's crime analyst, Steve Ryan. Steve. Yeah, Lena, any time an investigator approaches any sort of investigation, they do it with an, an open mind. And the idea is to let the facts speak for themselves. And right now, we do not have a lot of facts. We have a lot of circumstantial information pertaining to this explosion that we know occurred on the other side of the border, on the American side of the border here at the uh, Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls. And we know that two people died in that uh, lone vehicle as a result. And that's all we know. We heard the feds come out earlier and say that they are acting under the assumption 
that this was an act of terror. They are doing that because of the circumstantial information, not the facts, because the facts have not been made known yet by the FBI, who are the leads in this investigation. And the circumstantial uh, information I'm talking about are such things as, of course, the tension in the Middle East, the fact that it is the American Thanksgiving tomorrow, and the location as to which this explosion occurred. That's the circumstantial information that caused the feds to come out and say that they're acting as though it was an act of terror. They do not know that as a fact. They're doing all this out of precaution, uh, the protocols. The FBI will gather the evidence to determine who was in that vehicle, did it explode intentionally, or was it some sort of collision? Was it some sort of a medical episode? And where did that vehicle come from? We do not know if that car, in fact, came from Ontario. This is all part of the investigation, and our authorities on this side are acting under the guidance of the feds and the law enforcement authorities, acting as if it is a terror attack or act until such time that they learn that it's not and then they can scale everything back. That's what's going on right now. The only facts we have at this point in time, an explosion on the American side of the bridge and that two people have died as a result of a car explosion. Nothing else is fact. We're waiting for the FBI to make those determinations before they release that information. All right, Steve Ryan, live at the border tonight, of course. We'll continue to check in with Steve. And for more on this dynamic situation, let's bring in CTV's public safety analyst and former OPP commissioner, Chris Lewis. Uh, thank you for being with us. Lots to talk about here. Uh, national security experts, Chris, they're telling CTV News they are operating under the assumption that this explosion was terror-related. Uh, those sources also say officials haven't ruled out that the explosion was the result of other means, like a medical event or reckless driver. How complicated would you say this investigation is? Well, it is very complicated. I mean, determining, given that both people in that vehicle were killed reportedly, uh, determining the motive for this may be very difficult if it was a deliberate act. Uh, it may, if it was a deliberate act, it's either a criminal act, just trying to cause damage or kill somebody, uh, not necessarily a terrorist act, which is, falls under specific issues around politics and racism and religion, et cetera. It may be none of those things. Uh, and then it may be something totally accidental, somebody having a physical health episode or someone suffering from mental health issues uh, and, and potentially impairment, you know, drugs or alcohol or whatever. So there's a lot of factors to investigate. Here. Okay, so along with that, Chris, the OPP just posted to social media they would like to reassure our communities that there is no known threat to public safety in Ontario at this time. Can you tell us, you know, the challenges with reassuring the public and make, you know, making sure that people are at ease, especially while this is also being investigated? Well, if they're saying it, then it's true, because if there was any doubt at all, they wouldn't come out and make that, that very positive statement. Um, and, you know, there's a duty to inform the public if there's a potential threat. But if there's not, then there's a duty to tell the public to, you know, sorry, this is awful. We're investigating. It's under control. But there's, don't be nervous. You can still go to the theater in Hamilton mm -hmm. or what, downtown Toronto. So, so that's very important, that, that ongoing communication. People need to feel safe at times like this. But once again, I, you know, I'll be very surprised. I've been wrong many times in the past. But I'll be very surprised if this was a terrorist act. There wasn't the big fanfare, lots of victims, you know, mm. blowing the customs building right off the map or anything like that. It just something that was pretty pretty dynamic given the situation and the flames, but it may be gasoline exploding in a collision and, and no more than that. Vehicles don't normally explode though, Chris. And and so no. if this wasn't intentional, what what could have happened here? I think a lot of people are wondering about that tonight. Well, vehicles don't always explode. In fact, they don't explode very often, but they have exploded. And gasoline's a very, very volatile substance. A gas fumes even more so. So a gas tank would have both in it. If it's ruptured at the right time, place, the right angle, and a spark or a flame ignites it, you're going to have that. We've also had cases, I'm not saying this is what's occurred here, but we've had cases where people committed suicide with cans of gas and propane tanks in the car before collision. So, you know, there's a lot of possibilities here. But motive, you know, whether it's cr a criminal act to maybe like a murder-suicide or mm -hmm. whatever versus terrorism where they're looking for lots of targets and, and real f huge fanfare, we're just not seeing that here at this point. And Chris, can you give us a little bit of insight into how investigations like this work? This is, you know, international, cross-border. You have agencies like the FBI involved in this. Can you tell us about that? Because you did mention 
communication, and communication is key here, especially for something so public. Absolutely. And in the U.S., of course, that, that area that that occurred in is under the, the Homeland Security umbrella. That includes the, the uh, Customs Border Point folks and everything around that border stuff. The FBI, because it's terrorism, they have a role as well. So they'd be working with Homeland Security. And then you've got local police if it's just a criminal act of some sort or an accident that would be involved from an investigative perspective as well. Mm -hmm. But they're erring in the side of caution. We used to always say any death is a murder till you prove otherwise. Well, when you've got issues happening around an international border and an explosion, you're going to consider terrorism till proven otherwise. So all of those folks that will be involved and they'll have clear lines as to who's doing what, reporting to who, who's informing the public. And then, of course, they always have linkages to Canada, given the proximity and, you know, the potential that maybe this was heading to Canada and things went awry. Who knows? But there'll be lots of communication and people working together. Yeah, and, and Chris, I know that you noted that you would be surprised if this was a terror attack, but it's no surprise that officials on, on both sides of the border uh, take this as seriously as they are. The timing here, we, we have to talk about that. This comes right before American Thanksgiving, Black Friday, one of the busiest travel times of the year, and all of this happening in the midst of the Israel-Hamas war, and, and tensions are ever so high. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Everything you've said is correct. And if they weren't taking it seriously and treating it as terrorism until proven otherwise, they'd drop, they would be dropping the ball. That would be improper. Uh, so my comments really are around just my read on it. And I am not an expert in terrorism. But what have we seen around the world? But the timing is, you know, it's, it's a North American only mm -hmm. holiday weekend. It's a Christian celebration, Thanksgiving. Uh, and so in the middle of the Israeli-Hamas conflict, yeah, it's involving a number of countries, including the U.S., tensions are rising. And, and so there's a whole pile of factors there, as well as the extra traffic that a holiday weekend brings. But it wasn't aimed at a bunch That's of lives. It's the other issue. It's more around the fact that it happened at the border that causes that additional concern. All right, Chris Lewis keeping a really close eye on this story. Uh, thank you for your analysis. And we also want to mention to our, our viewers, we are expecting to hear from New York's governor, uh, Kathy Hochul. She will be updating the media at some point this hour. So keep it here on CP24 for that. Thanks, thanks again, Chris. Okay, so now we're going to be joined live by Sal Ali Lasha, who witnessed today's explosion. So, Sal, the video yes. that you recorded on your phone what did you see? And what was going through your head when you were watching this on your phone? I mean, it was uh, crazy. I was at the booth um, mm -hmm. currently with the Border Patrol, and they were screening and checking our passports just before we crossed. And we haven't crossed just yet, so we were on the booth. Then we heard a screeching noise as if someone was trying to break or swerve somewhere, and then a, a big, loud noise, and the explosion happened. We can see from this footage that you've shared, and we're looking at it now, that you were quite close to that explosion. We can see a lot of smoke, a lot of fire on scene. Uh, there are reports that that vehicle was speeding, Sal. Did you, did you hear that before the explosion? So I didn't witness or see the vehicle, like, uh, speeding or seen it when the explosion happened. But, we, like, again, I seen the screeching noise. And that's when we heard it, and then it, everything went up into flames, heavy flames. Okay, Sal, can you take us... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. Um, can you take us right back to the moment right after the explosion happened? You know, what was going on around you? What was the response like? Who did you see, and did you see people going towards the vehicle or away from the vehicle? Actually, more going towards the vehicle because everybody was pa panicking. The uh, Border Patrol officers, um, the civilians, of course, were in the vehicles, mm -hmm. the ones that were in there. There were some outside of it. So some were just furious and didn't know what to do. And they were helping one officer get away from the explosion because they have a station right near the gate. And he seemed kind of injured. And... They closed the border right away and turned us around. And, and can you just speak to how terrifying that might have been for you to witness? It was pretty uh, terrifying. I mean, as you've seen, it was very close to us. I thought it was closer than it was. It was only a couple hundred feet away. 
and I put my vehicle in reverse almost, wanted to reverse from the booth because we didn't want to get injured or thinking that was going to come closer to us. Okay, Sal, thank you for your time, and we're glad you're safe. Happening right now, New York's Governor Kathy Hochul is providing an update on the Rainbow Bridge explosion. Let's listen in live. Near one of the border crossings into Canada, the Rainbow Bridge. There are four border crossings here in western New York. This is one of the busiest crossings, not just in western New York, but along the entire U.S.-Canadian border. And it happens on the busiest travel day of the year. So naturally, in a time of heightened alert, everyone sprang into action. It crashed into a Customs and Border Patrol booth, and the car and the booth immediately exploded. Burst into flames. I saw the video of an airborne vehicle that was absolutely surreal. You actually had to look at it and say, was this generated by AI? Because it was so surreal to see how high in the air this vehicle went, and then the crash, and the explosion, and the fire. That video will be released very shortly. As I said, we're not aware of any threats to this area, but I state the caveat that the investigation is ongoing. If you can imagine, this vehicle basically incinerated. Nothing is left but the engine. The pieces are scattered over 13, 14 booths. So it is a large scene, and it's going to take a lot of time for our federal law enforcement partners, who are with me here today and I'll identify, to be able to piece together the real story, to identify the make of the car. Obviously, there is not a license plate. I've been briefed by law law enforcement for the last hour. New York State Police, Colonel Andy Crow, Colonel Allen, other law enforcement officials. I've been joined by Andy Bowker, who's the special agent in charge of the Customs and Border Patrol. I was also briefed by the SAC from the FBI. Also was on the phone with Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas. The FBI Director Christopher Bray has reached out. The White House has reached out. My staff has been in communication with all of them. I spoke with Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, Congressman Higgins, local law enforcement, as well as local elected officials, because the world is watching to find out what happened here. And again, at a time when there's such high anxiety, stress levels are already high. And we've been on heightened alert since October 7th. That's why it's so important for me to stand here and tell the world based on what we know at this moment and again, anything can change. There is no sign of terrorist activity with respect to this crash. We've identified that this is a local individual, a Western New Yorker. Two individuals died in the, the vehicle. The Border Patrol individual working in the booth was injured. The booth literally protected that individual. They went to the hospital with minor injuries and have been released. There is also, again, the busiest travel day of the year, there is a major disruption. And first of all, our cross-border travel. Right now, the Rainbow Bridge will remain closed while law enforcement continues investigation. Again, this is a large, widely scattered scene, and we're trying to identify all the elements to make sure that there is no unforeseen uh, situations that we need to address before we can open again to the public. We're going to make sure the public is safe before they go back on the Rainbow Bridge. Also made sure the, the structural integrity of the booths. Also very important, our state DOT be involved in that as well. The Whirlpool Bridge and Lewis and Queensland Bridge opening early this evening, probably open by now. Can anybody confirm that? Yeah. We're open now, okay? They are open now. There's been a lot of people trying to get across. I appreciate that. Uh, the Peace Bridge, which was open, has already op reopened half an hour ago. For those traveling by train, unfortunately, Amtrak has temporarily suspended its cross-border service between New York State and Canada. And at the Buffalo Airport, despite early reports, the Buffalo Airport was never closed and everything is normal. Domestic flights are still active. Uh, there has been no cessation in service there. What I want to do at this time is extend my extreme gratitude to all of our partners, Customs and Border Patrol, Homeland Security, FBI, our state police, 
local sheriffs from Niagara County, Erie County, all stepped up to assist in trying to identify what exactly transpired here beginning at 11.27 a.m. this morning. They gave up their time from their families. They showed up. They reminded us that there are people who put on a uniform every single day, put themselves in harm's way. The people out there on that bridge, in the immediate aftermath of what happened, unknown, the source, the cause of this explosion, were out there doing their jobs. So I want to pause to give them just the gratitude of a governor and 20 million New Yorkers who sleep better at night because of their willingness to do this. They run toward danger. They should be with their families today, but they will not be. This investigation will go on for a number of days, and that's why we will not have any further answers uh, at this time as to the individuals involved, the deceased, uh, any motivation, and there's a lot of, lot of unanswered questions. But at this time, we just need to dial down the temperature right now. And that's what I plan to do as governor, just let everybody know all is well. We're investigating. More information could arise, but based on the preliminary investigation, no sign of terrorist involvement in the horrific explosion that occurred here in western New York. Any questions? Governor Vogel, can you explain what you're basing that determination on, that there was no terrorist activity here, instead of calling this a horrific accident? That's based on my briefings with uh, experienced law enforcement, with the FBI, Homeland Security, and the Customs and Border Protection. Uh, they are, uh, they brought experts. They're still analyzing this, but there's been no indication based on any online threats, anyone taking credit for anything, all the usual areas you look to identify whether or not there's a group involved at this time. At this time, you hear me say this at this time, a dozen times, because it is still unfolding. But I didn't want to leave the public un with a lot more anxiety than they need to have at this time. So there's just, I just want to be perfectly clear, there is no evidence to show at this time that this was a terrorist activity? There is no evidence at this time that this was a terrorist activity. And that's what I want to make very clear to the public, just to calm everybody down. It's really important because uh, based on what's happening in other parts of the world, everybody is on edge. And this is an international border. And we've always felt a vulnerability there. But this was a, a you know, I won't call it an accident. It's not been determined to be an accident. Uh, you don't know whether the, intent the driver was intentional in how they drove. We do not know that. All I know is there was a horrific accident. Well, I won't call it an accident. A horrific incident, a crash, an explosion, loss of life, but at this time, no known terrorist connection. Governor, we saw agents canvassing the neighborhood, specifically near the casino and on Niagara Street. Is there a reason why? Our sources are telling us this couple may have left the casino and were on their way to Toronto. I can't confirm um, where the car originated at this, at this time, but there is suspicion that the vehicle may have originated in, uh, in that vicinity. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you just clarify of Niagara Falls or where that car may have originated? Within the city. Of Niagara Falls? Not saying that it's a local resident. I'm saying that it was, it's, a, it's a Western New York resident who was most likely in that vicinity prior to the high speed, high rate of speed, extraordinarily high rate of speed that led to the crash into the median that sent the vehicle airborne. And when you see this video, your jaw will drop in disbelief at how this went so high over an eight, an eight foot high fence. Uh, it's rather extraordinary. Time for one more. Can you just walk us through the idea, the decision to close all borders, all border crossings in Western New York? What went into that? And, and can you walk us through the sheer magnitude of that kind of decision? Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the representative from the Customs and Border Patrol, special a or agent in charge. Uh, that would be Aaron Bowker. Yep. Would you like to address the decision made to close the border? Thank you, Governor. Uh, I think anytime you have an incident like this, um, you want to take an abundance of precaution to protect not only the staff and personnel but also the public. Mm -hmm. So you make a quick decision like that, and then uh, and then to go back based on the totality of circumstances, working with law enforcement partners to reopen, we are reopened. Can you walk us through uh, the man who was hurt, the agent? Was it a customs agent or was it a board protection? It was a customs and board protection officer. Um, out of an abundance of precaution, based on some minor injuries, 
went to the hospital, was treated and released. And what have your conversations with that person been? Uh, I'm not going to get any other further details at this time. A veteran of the force or how long? Just going to leave it at that it was an employee. Have you ruled okay. out suicide? Talking I'm sorry? Casino? Have you ruled out suicide? It's an ongoing investigation, so we're not going to say anything else at this time. Did you, say, did you say how many people were injured at the scene, just the one, or was there multiple injuries? From our employees, it was one employee. I think that's something, I think it's something we should be grateful for. When you look at the scale of the scene, of how far the pieces of this vehicle exploded and scattered, the fact that other people in other vehicles, and there's been some damage to other vehicles, I mean, you can imagine the lines were long, many booths, and this was not an isolated late night occurrence. This is the busiest travel day of the year at 11.27 in the morning. People were on the road, so it was a very congested area, and thank God there was no one else injured. It could have been much more uh, cataclysmic, and so, but thank you all for coming out. I appreciate uh, your attention and helping us let the public know uh, to dial back uh, the anxiety associated with this event. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right, another development in this major breaking news. We just heard from New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, providing an update on the Rainbow Bridge explosion. She says at this point, there is no indication that this was a terror attack, acknowledging that it happened uh, during one of the busiest travel times of the year, right before American Thanksgiving, at a time when tensions are high because of the Israel-Hamas war. But she says... There are no known threats to the area. An investigation is underway to piece together the real story. As she says, the world wa wa watches to find out what exactly happened. Yeah, Gov Governor Hochul also said she described the video as absolutely surreal. Right now, we're joined by Forrest Willett, who was traveling on the Peace Bridge after the explosion happened. So, Forrest, thank you very much for taking time to speak with us. What did you see? What, what did you hear? Well, we were on the Peace Bridge, a friend and I, uh, a friend of my, myself, we were on our way to Cleveland to feed 250 homeless people Thanksgiving meals. So we were excited to be there early and arrive at the border. We were one car away from crossing the U.S. border when all the red lights came on and all the, can, the border patrol officers left their booths and they all started walking away from the bridge which was very confusing. We thought maybe they were on strike or walking off the job. Very confusing for everyone around. So after about 15 minutes, we shut our vehicle off and waited. And then it wasn't much longer. The Border Patrol officers came up to all the vehicles and said, there's been an explosion on the Rainbow Bridge and a possible bomb threat to this bridge. We need to evacuate everyone immediately. So if you can imagine anyone who's ever crossed the border, you wow. know the big lineups. Uh, the big lineups at the border, we had to get everyone turned around and back to Canada. And they did it in a calm manner. Everyone got back and turned around safe. When you hear that potential bomb threat at the border, I mean, those are two things you never want to hear. What was the reaction around you like? Uh, there was a lot of uh, people who were uncertain, a lot of anxiety. It, it was just like somebody dropped the elevator floor out from underneath you. And you have this sinking feeling and sick feeling in your stomach as you're driving back across that bridge. It was a very eerie feeling knowing that there's a possible threat right on this bridge. And there was one, an explosion on the bridge that was next to us. And Forrest, now that you're hearing, you know, Gab Governor Hochul saying, let's uh, kind of dial it back yeah. a little bit. Uh, no, no known indication, nothing to indicate that this was a terrorist threat. Um, does that sort of put you a little bit more at ease? Yes, it, it puts puts us at ease, and uh, we're planning to travel and reach our destination in Cleveland and feed those people their meals tomorrow. As you can see, the bridge behind me just opened about 25 minutes ago. The uh, Peace Bridge is now open. And so what does that mean for you? You're turning back around then? Yes, we're heading back to Cleveland in the morning. Okay, Forrest Willett, uh, someone who is traveling on the Peace Bridge after the explosion happened. Good to hear from you and glad that you're safe. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Forrest. Thank you. And with that, it is 525, three degrees. This is Live at Five. Stay with us. We continue to follow the breaking news that a vehicle exploded on the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls. Multiple reports say two people are dead. But the governor of New York just said there is no indication that this was a terror attack. She also says there are no known threats to the area. We'll be right back.
When you only have one life, that's what makes it special. This is gonna be fun. Oh. I am pushing boost. to navigate life's adventures, it's time to Toyota. Six popular Ontario chefs are competing. Three culinary legends are judging. It's a sure thing. I'm going to win. I'm ready to go. One $25,000 charitable donation will be made in the winning chef's name. Beautifully executed. Technically, this is pretty simple. Who can incorporate milk in the most creative way? It's going to be something they've never seen before. This is the winning dish. Who will be the first ever milk master? All Seasons Resort. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Coltac Law. The world's greatest magicians come together live on stage for a holiday spectacular. The Illusionist Magic of the Holidays. November 28th through December 3rd at the Princess of Wales Theatre. Book at Mervish.com. One Audio Video's Black Friday sale is on now. From 4K smart TVs with two year warranty to home audio, sound bars, speakers, headphones, and car audio products, all are on sale at the guaranteed lowest prices anywhere. See the flyer at 2001audiovideo.com. Being a dad and granddad means ensuring I've got all the tools to make the right choice. And now I'm in my 50s. That's more important than ever. That's why I'm choosing to look after my family, just in case. Welcome to Seniors Choice. How can I help? Hi, I'd like a quick quote, please. If you're a Canadian resident age 50 to 80, you can choose the right amount of coverage for you and your family up to $250,000. That kind of money would help a lot. You can choose to apply over the phone now in just a few minutes with no medicals or blood tests needed, only a few health and lifestyle questions. Okay, great. Depending on the coverage you choose, it would be as little as $17.02 a month. That's just 56 cents a day. That's less than I thought. And that money could help cover my funeral costs, settle debts, or help my wife with retirement planning. I'll do it. Now that's done, I can get on with something much more interesting. Seniors' Choice are the number one direct choice for Canadians over 50. To get a free, no-obligation quote, call one of our trusted insurance advisors today at 1-844-802-2419 or visit seniorschoice.ca. 2001 Audio Video's Black Friday sale is on now. From 4K smart TVs with two-year warranty to home audio, sound bars, speakers, headphones, and car audio products, all are on sale at the guaranteed lowest prices anywhere. See the flyer at 2001audiovideo.com. We continue to follow breaking news from the border. The FBI is investigating a car explosion at the Rainbow Bridge crossing near Niagara Falls. Multiple reports say two people inside that vehicle that exploded died on scene. But we are hearing from the governor of New York now saying there are, is no sign that this is terrorism related and all border crossings in the area are now open except for the Rainbow Bridge. All right now let's go live to CP24's crime analyst Steve Ryan. So Steve, now that we have a little bit more information, can you paint a picture of us of what things are like there right now? Well, the Rainbow Bridge is, is still closed and most likely will be closed for some time uh, so this investigation can continue. But I think this really illustrates or demonstrates uh, the importance of um, allowing investigators to learn the facts. 
all investigations are done with an, an open mind when you go into it and you let the facts speak for themselves. And once you gather those facts, you can develop a working theory as to what you think may have transpired, but it's based on cold, hard facts that you learn at a scene or through talking to witnesses. So we heard earlier from the federal government when they came out and said that they were acting under the assumption that this was terror related. And they did that based on uh, an abundance of caution, on protocols, and on circumstantial information, such things as the tension in the Middle East, the location as to where this took place, and the fact that it is American Thanksgiving. There'd be a lot of traffic going over that border, one would assume. That is why they made that announcement. But the facts at the end of the day will tell the story. And the only facts that we have right now are that two people died in a vehicle that exploded on the American side. As part of the investigation, the investigators will learn if, in fact, this was an intentional act. Was it a collision? Was it some sort of uh, mental health issue? Was it a medical episode? All part of the investigation, which will develop the working theory as to what happened. But based on what the governor of New York has uh, said, that there is no evidence right now that this was an act of terror, that would suggest that all those protocols that they put into place at the time will now come down. They'll allow this investigation to unfold fluidly, normally, as it transpires. And if they learn something new, well, they, they can change the direction. But right now, it does not suggest that this was a terror attack at all. Uh, those assumptions were put into place because of protocols. And at the end of the day, the facts will tell the story. And the story appears to be that it may not have been an intentional act of terror. It may have been an intentional act of some sort of criminality, or it could have been an accident. But there is no, nothing to suggest that this was an act of terror. And this is why the borders on the other three locations here in this area are now being reopened. So okay. thank you guys. And that's CP24's crime analyst, Steve Ryan. Steve, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, all border crossings, as just reported, are now open except for the Rainbow Bridge. Let's check in with our traffic specialists, Adjua and Siabwa, about the disruptions in the Niagara area. Adjua. Well, you know, things are about to get a little bit better for commuters that trying to access either the Whirlpool uh, crossing or the Queenston Lewiston Bridge or even the Peace Bridge. As you heard, all lanes on those bridges access points have been reopened. And then add to more good news 405 fully accessible. That's the that's the route that does uh, take you uh, towards uh, the Queenston Lewiston Bridge, and you can see traffic is uh, getting by in great shape. So things are moving well through here as well. Got the word that uh, the Niagara bound at QEW a ramp that was at Central Avenue. That's the ramp that takes you to the Peace Bridge, also accessible again. So a little bit of good news, but the Rainbow Bridge uh, will be closed at least for the next little while as the investigation does continue. I'll send it back to you. All right, Adjua Insia Yaboa with that traffic update. Thank you very much regarding those bridges. Well, authorities in Toronto are now on heightened alert. And let's bring in CP24's Andrew Brennan, who's live outside police headquarters for more. And, and Toronto police are on high alert as well tonight, Andrew. Yeah, Lena and Bakari, not just Toronto police, and as we are now hearing hearing from the governor down in New York, that there seems to be no indication that this has any motivation of terror to it. No chances were being taken, that being said, by local police forces, including Toronto. As we have mentioned already, CTV News sources were, tell, were advising that governmental security sources were advising local law enforcement to treat this as if it was terror-related, which is why they were saying not only Toronto police, for instance, putting out a statement indicating that they would have heightened presence near not only major areas, but out in the community to indicate as best they can that they would be present and visible. Peel police also doing. Don't forget that they are the jurisdiction that oversees the at least ground operations for Pearson International Airport, Toronto's international airport. Peel police being visible. I confirmed with one of our camera people who was there not long ago about how many police officers he was seeing. And again, seeing more police that are being readily apparent, visible, making sure that if uh, anyone has, uh, for the sake of peace of mind, an indication as this could be something more nefarious than uh, something tragic, they wanted to make sure that they were there. So again, looking at what Tr uh, Toronto Pearson International also saying in a statement, the Greater Toronto Airports Authority indicating that they had been 
told by partners to maintain uh, maintain alert, but they had no deviation to regular schedule, unlike Buffalo's International Airport, which saw a closure for some of its international flights for a, a few hours in terms of a t uh, uh, an indeterminate amount of time. But that resuming there, we did not see that in Canada. We did not see that in Toronto, but Peel police ensuring that they were on the ground at the station, we, uh, at, the, at the airport, as we saw Toronto police saying that they would be visibly more present. One thing I can say, Lena and Bakari, is as this situation, which is, again, very fluid, continued to evolve, and the questions on whether or not with a, 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 border, a border location between Canada and the United States, we did not see any police outside of the U.S. consulate here in Toronto, for instance, and I know that we heard from the governor saying that uh, there was uh, the, one of the questions being asked of whether the the people in question after they left that that gas station that they potentially could have been coming to Toronto. This has no bearing on whether or not anyone here was uh, was uh, a, a person of concern. But police were out in the community to make sure that people were feeling safe as best as possible. We'll send it back to you both inside. All right, Andrew, thank you for this. And again, we continue to follow breaking news from the border tonight. Uh, authorities investigating a car explosion at the Rainbow Bridge border crossing. But we are now hearing from New York's governor who says there are no signs of terrorism here. It's 536, three degrees. You're watching Live at Five. A former RCMP official has been found guilty of breaching Canada's security laws. Those details are after the break. Three words for you. Treat yourself. I think that pretty much sums it up. I found it at Spencer Gifts. Oh, this is unbelievable! This is so exciting! I have goosebumps. Feel. I really think you're up to something there. Hey! Uh oh! Nailed it. The Staples Black Friday sale is on now. Save up to $300 off laptops, up to 40% off audio, and up to 25% off gaming tech. Prices won't go lower on Black Friday. Beautiful Bluetooth speaker. Can you save on the perfect gift at Staples? Let's find out. All right, it's today. Nothing brings the pack together like a trip to Great Wolf Lodge. It's the Black Friday sale in Leon's. Save up to 50% on select furniture. You really like wearing that thing? Protects my jersey. And I think it looks great. Yeah. You and who else? I think it looks fantastic. Order skip to win tarps, tickets, and more. What's happening these days? Gas and food prices are through the roof, and mortgage rates are skyrocketing too. Talk about bad timing. There's bills, car payments, kids' lessons, and what about the fun stuff? You need room to breathe and someone to help figure it out. You need Newborrow to show you how to solve your debt and save money with the equity in your home. Use your home to get a loan with Newborrow. Start your new tomorrow at newborrow.com. A former RCMP official has been found guilty of breaching Canada's security laws. An Ottawa jury finding 51-year-old Cameron J. Ortis guilty on all six charges he was facing. Ortis was charged for revealing classified information to three individuals in 2015 and trying to do so a fourth time. The judge overseeing the case has revoked Ortis' bail because he was found guilty on all charges. He's expected to be sentenced in January. And Tamara Leach's defense team says that there's no evidence that she and a fellow so-called Freedom Convoy organizer should be viewed as co-conspirators because their actions were not illegal. And the Crown finished its case against Leach and Chris Barber on Monday. The two are co-accused of mischief and intimidation. This is connected to the protests against COVID-19 restrictions that gridlocked downtown Ottawa for weeks in 2022. And the Crown hopes to prove that the two worked so closely together that evidence against one of them should apply to the other. The trial is expected to resume next week.
Well, Israel's national security advisor says a planned hostage for prisoner swap with Hamas has been delayed until at least Friday. Egyptian state media had earlier reported the ceasefire would begin tomorrow morning. It's not known if that will still be the case. When it does take effect, the pause in fighting is to last at least four days. The deal includes Hamas releasing 50 of the 240 hostages who were taken to Gaza after the October 7th attacks in Israel. In return, Israel is set to release 150 Palestinian women and children from jails and let in much-needed aid, including medical supplies, food and fuel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the Red Cross will also be allowed to visit the remaining hostages in Gaza. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spoke to reporters about the situation in Gaza before attending a cabinet meeting this morning. We talked uh, at length about the situation in Gaza this morning on our G20 summit. Um, the reality is this uh, humanitarian pause is what Canada and others have been calling for for weeks now. It is going to allow for uh, hostages to finally uh, be liberated. It's going to allow for significant amounts of humanitarian aid to get into uh, the civilians and the innocent people in Gaza who desperately need it. Uh, and it's going to allow for protecting of civilian life, including hopefully getting even more Canadians and, and foreign nationals out. And Israel is repeating that the ceasefire is just a pause in the war. An operational pause for release of hostages does not change it. Israel is still at war with Hamas, and we are committed achieving our goals. Defeat Hamas and bring all our hostages home. And multiple people are believed to be dead after Israeli airstrikes in Khan Yunus. This is in southern Gaza. Several homes were destroyed in the strikes. And one survivor says that displaced people are among the victims. And the Israeli military released video today that it says shows troops destroying tunnel shafts in the Gaza Strip. The IDF says that soldiers have exposed and destroyed about 400 tunnel shafts since the start of the war. In the meantime, Gaza's health ministry says six Palestinians were killed in a raid an airstrike on a refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. Intense firefights began late yesterday and continued for six hours. And the U.N. Secretary General is welcoming the agreement reached by Israel and Hamas. A spokesperson addressed reporters in New York today. This is an important step in the right direction, but much more needs to be done. The United Nations will mobilize all its capacities to support the implementation of the agreement and maximize its positive impact on the humanitarian situation in Gaza. The UN says a total of 79 trucks carrying humanitarian supplies entered Gaza from Egypt yesterday, and nearly 64,000 liters of fuel also entered Gaza. The UN says it's being used to support food distribution and the operation of generators at hospitals and other critical services. Meantime, the World Health Organization says only two small hospitals in northern Gaza are partially operational, with the remaining 22 out of service. It's 543, three degrees, this is lap five. In celebration of National Housing Day, the city has announced it's opening dozens of new rent gear to income modular homes in Scarborough for people experiencing or at risk of homelessness. Details of the plan in moments. TSN has a Black Friday deal everyone can cheer about. Incredible. Stream a full year of the biggest moments in sports for 40% off. It's going to be a great celebration. The Super Bowl. This is unbelievable. World Juniors. Raptors. Regional NHL. It's showtime. The Great Cup. Euro 2024 and so much more. You'd be crazy to change the channel. And CSN Plus is also included with your subscription. Sign me up for this. Subscribe now for 40% off a year of TSN. Offer ends November 28th. Terms apply. Keep watching and learn how Renewal by Anderson makes replacing windows and doors really affordable. You could repaint the house, you could redo the deck, or you could take on a project that actually saves you money. Replacing your worn out drafty windows and patio doors with Renewal by Anderson can cut your energy bills and boost the value of your home. You could get started today. And stay tuned to learn more about Renewal by Anderson's Countdown to Black Friday sale. And here's something a lot of people don't know. When it comes to replacing your worn out windows, material matters. Our Fibrix Composite is a revolutionary blend of wood fibers and thermopolymers, offering the strength and stability of wood with the low maintenance appeal of vinyl. And unlike vinyl, 
Fibrix gives you a durable frame that resists warping, cracking, and rotting. Choose a material worthy of your home and upgrade with Renewal by Anderson. And we mentioned our sale, right? The details are coming up. We promise you'll like them. Now, let's talk about installation. We all know that finding a reputable contractor to replace your windows and doors can be a headache. At Renewal by Anderson, we offer a turnkey solution. One company trusted since 1995 to handle everything. Consultation, design, installation, warranty. We make energy efficient, low maintenance windows that fit your budget. And we make the process easy. So reach out to us, we'll show you how. It's Renewal by Anderson's Countdown to Black Friday sale, and it's our biggest dollar discount of the year. Save $355 on every window, and save $910 on every patio door and entry door. Plus, pay nothing for a year. Don't miss our biggest dollar discount of the year. Our Countdown to Black Friday sale ends November 24th. Call 1-800-665-4700. That's 1-800-665-4700. Closed captioning of this CP24 program is brought to you by Split the Pot Lottery. Support 22 Ontario hospitals with 13 grand prize winners. Together we thrive. Welcome back. The governor of the Bank of Canada says interest rates may be at their peak, but isn't ruling out raising them further. Tiff Macklem made the remarks during a speech to the St. John Region Chamber of Commerce today. He says interest rates may be high enough to bring inflation back to the central bank's target, but warned fighting it half-heartedly would be a mistake. The bank has pushed its key rate up to a 22-year high of 5%. Macklem says it's prepared to raise the rate again if needed and can't say exactly when it'll be able to come down. When we see a clear trend that um, we're clearly going back to two, uh, it'll be time to, to uh, start discussing whether it's time to lower interest rates. Right now, Really, we're still assessing whether interest rates are high enough. They may be high enough. They may be restrictive enough to get us back uh, to where uh, our 2% target. Analysts say they expect that the bank will move to cut rates by the middle of next year. And the city's opening 57 new rent gear to income modular homes in Scarborough for people experiencing or at risk of homelessness. The homes are located at Dundalk Drive in the Kennedy and Ellesmere area. They're private studio apartments that include communal areas, administrative offices, and a commercial kitchen. And tenants will also be able to access services from a nonprofit group that provides support to people who have experienced chronic homelessness. The announcement coincided with National Housing Day. These are homes for people experiencing some challenges. And we know that supportive housing is critical this, it means that seven days a week, every hour of the day, they can access professional help. And this project is the result of a partnership between all three levels of government. The Ontario Federation of Labour marched downtown this afternoon to mark National Housing Day. Labor activists, tenant strikers, housing advocates and community allies are calling for rent control and affordable housing. They say all levels of government need to do more to ensure everyone can afford a home and that it's not just about building more housing but bringing down costs. We've been seeing that happen with workers since last fall as they fight back against the government, as they fight back against their bosses to demand better wages, when we're fighting to have better policies around housing. I mean, Doug Ford could fix a lot of this just by putting, you know, rental caps back in place. Stop worrying about the developers. Let's talk about the people in Ontario who are struggling to make ends meet. And that's why we're here today uh, to fight for everyone. The Ford government rolled back rent controls on newly built units following his election win in 2018. And the race for Ontario Liberal leadership is in the home stretch. Bonnie Crombie, Nate Erskine Smith, Ted Shu, and Yasser Nakvi, they're all vying for the top spot within the party. Each is making their final pitches to party membership about why they're the best suited for the job. This is all ahead of voting this weekend.
I'm a most experienced leader, and I've had the opportunity to serve in, in cabinet in previous uh, liberal uh, government, which uh, did a lot of good things uh, in our province. Did we make mistakes like many governments do? Of course, but you know, I've learned from those mistakes, and I think that makes me even more credible and a competent candidate uh, that can build our party, uh, uh, put forward a platform that focuses on practical solutions that will make people's lives easier to live and defeat Doug Ford in 2026. In this race, we've articulated solutions to affordability. We've talked about the need to increase the Ontario Disability Support Program. We've talked about the need to put consumers first in everything that we do. And we've talked about the need to get housing built. The, the province of Ontario right now, the provincial government, could do what Sean Fraser's doing. He's jumping across municipality to municipality to get housing built. And the province, with a stroke of a pen, could end exclusionary zoning and build gentle density everywhere. I want to solve the really hard problems of cost of living and housing, our health care system in quotes because it's not good enough to be called a system, We've got a mental health and addictions crisis and a climate crisis and our backs are kind of against the wall with government debt so we have a less, less room to maneuver to deal with these problems. I want to deal with these problems. I want the people of Ontario to trust that a Liberal Party led by me uh, will tackle these problems, propose thoughtful solutions. The Liberal Party is back. All of us traveling around the province this summer has really ignited a spark. People are confident about being Liberals again. We're building back trust with our brand. And for the very first time, we have one person, one vote, and people are very excited to mark their ranked ballot. So people will have the opportunity to choose those individuals they want to put up against Doug Ford in 2026. And they can even rank us, one, two, three, four. So the voters will absolutely decide. And the new Liberal leader will be decided December 2nd. It is 552, 3 degrees. You're watching Live at 5. Coming up on the other side of this break, we'll talk about your long-range weather forecast. Chris Potter is coming up. A car explosion shuts down the Canada-U.S. border across Niagara. There are a lot of questions. Then a Toronto family's hope for the Israel-Hamas hostage deal. The unknown is what kills me. On CTV News at 6. He's got nothing uh, to field in front of him. Uh, He's at the 30, the 20, 10, 5, uh, touchdown! The first thing you notice about the all-new Hyundai Kona SUV is there's a lot more to notice. It's more beautiful, more comfortable and advanced, and way more you. And you, and you. Because at Hyundai, we took the best-selling subcompact SUV in Canada and made it more wah. When I was blindsided by a reckless driver, it wasn't just me who felt the pain. My entire family suffered. And when I turned to the insurance company for help, they denied our claim. If you've been injured, call Presler Law. It's the Black Friday sale in Leon's. Save up to 50% on select furniture. Save for A performance that truly matters for each and every one of us. This is what you've been waiting for. Returning to Mississauga, Toronto, and Hamilton. Tickets are in high demand. Get yours now at Genune.com. Ready to make improvements in your life? A FlexiLine can help you do that. Could you use 80,000, 180, or even 1.8 million? Call us today. CapitalDirect.ca Every kid deserves a smile this holiday season. Go to thewish.ca for more info.
Welcome back. It's now time for a detailed look at your weather forecast. Obviously today we started off with cloudy and damp conditions with drizzle, mist, local fog. Now we're dry, breezy, and a little bit cooler. Uh, normal daytime high for this time of year is around 6, or actually 5 by tomorrow. And uh, we peaked around 7 to 8 today. Now we're at 3, 2 in Barrie, 4 in Peterborough, 0 through North Bay, Sudbury, and 2, nation's capital, Ottawa. Uh, in terms of the winds, they are generally coming in from the northwest, and they're still gusting to around 40 kilometers an hour. There's still some lake effect showers coming in off of Lake Huron, Georgian Bay. This is going to be short lived. Most areas will escape with a little bit of cloud from time to time. The GTA looks dry through the overnight, despite being cloudy from time to time. Same story through tomorrow morning, the afternoon, at least the first half. By the second half of the afternoon and into the evening, we'll start to clear out more effectively. Northwesterly winds become aligned both at the surface and aloft, and that allows lake effect snow to develop briefly for Friday morning and early afternoon southeast of Georgian Bay, as well as off of Lake Huron, kind of scattered. Our share of it will be maybe a few rogue flurries from time to time. This act Activity quickly dies down as we get into the evening and overnight. Saturday appears to be mostly sunny. Most of the cloud overhead will be high level cloud, so we'll stay dry. But in terms of those snowfall accumulations, although they're highly localized, they will still be present once again southeast of Georgian Bay and Lake Huron. So if you're traveling north in the 400 a Friday morning or even Friday early afternoon, be prepared for that. Even the north end of the 404, be prepared. It's not going to be a significant snowfall event, but some snow nonetheless. Temperatures tomorrow around 7. At times will be cloudy, but dry will clear out once again during in the late evening, or pardon me, the late afternoon. Zero, your high for Friday, Oof, a little bit cooler. Once we get into Saturday, highs around four, three for us on Sunday. Another system works its way in. Looks like flurries mixing with showers in the downtown core, so no real threat of anything on the ground, but to the north where it will end up being a touch cooler. A light dusting can't be completely ruled out. My, by Monday, we get back into lake effect snow to the north. This time it will be generally east southeast of Georgian Bay and Lake Huron, so generally north of Barrie around Irelia. So that's where you're headed Monday. Be prepared for that. By Tuesday, the the wind shift again, giving us scattered flurries and then maybe the odd snowflake for Wednesday afternoon, but it's into the evening that we show signs of getting into the chance of some light snow with some minimal accumulations locally. That's your forecast. Thank you, Chris. Well, disappointing news if you have tickets for tonight's KISS concert at Scotiabank Arena. It's been canceled. Yeah, singer Paul Stanley sharing this photo online saying that he's done everything possible to get on stage, but the flu has made it impossible. He says that the band sends its deepest apologies. Refunds will be available at point of purchase. KISS also had to cancel a show in Ottawa last night. Well, some Canadian astronauts got new assignments today. Yeah, Joshua Kutrick is going to be the next Canadian astronaut to live and work on the International Space Station as part of the Starliner 1 mission, which is expected to be launched in 2025. He's going to become the first Canadian astronaut to be part of NASA's commercial crew program. And during his mission, Kutrick will conduct science experiments and technology demonstrations. And then Jenny Gibbons has been assigned as a Canadian backup astronaut for the Artemis II. That's the first crewed mission to the moon in over 50 years. <laughs> For me to have the opportunity to support that crew in whatever they need um, will be exceptional. I will help develop the procedures that that crew is going to be using. Future crews will be using on the surface of the moon. Um, I will be acting as a crew test subject for anything from launch to splashdown and landing. And I will act as a Capcom. So I'll be speaking to that crew and provide the connection between the ground team here on Earth with the mission around the moon. So I'm incredibly proud and grateful and just excited. I'm excited for what what's next, what this means for Canada. Mm. And Artemis II, that's NASA's first moon mission in over 50 years. That's scheduled to launch November of 2024. Proud moment for Canadians. It's 5.58 now, three degrees. You're watching Toronto's breaking news, CP24. New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, says there is no evidence to indicate any terrorist activity was behind a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge border crossing that killed two people. She also says there are no known threats to the area. We can tell you an investigation is underway tonight to determine what happened and three Canada-U.S. border crossings in the Niagara region have reopened. Thank you for watching. CTV News at 6 is next. Up into the air, we just seen the fireball, and that's all we could see. It was just covered in smoke everywhere. 
A deadly car explosion at a Canada-U.S. border crossing. Two people are killed. Tonight, a live shot of the Rainbow Bridge. It remains closed, but three others have now reopened. The incident sparking travel chaos and increased police patrols. Good evening. Was it intentional, reckless driving, or a terrible accident? Authorities say they are not ruling anything out. Officials on both sides of the border, including the FBI, investigating tonight. It happened at the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls just before noon. Just moments ago, New York Governor Kathy Hochul provided an update saying there's no evidence it was a terrorist activity at this time. The world is watching to find out what happened here. And again, at a time when there's such high anxiety, Stress levels are already high, and we've been on heightened alert since October 7th. That's why it's so important for me to stand here and tell the world based on what we know at this moment, and again, anything can change, there is no sign of terrorist activity with respect to this crash. We've identified... CTV's Beth McTenell joins us live from Niagara Falls tonight with the latest. Beth. Michelle, tonight the Rainbow Bridge and the Canada-U.S. border crossing here remains closed, but it appears the possible threat may be over. These are the flames and debris from the American side of the Rainbow Bridge around 1 this afternoon. Multiple reports now say two people in a vehicle are dead, frightening witnesses. And about 30 feet from me, I seen something airborne. I first thought it was an airplane. It looked like slow motion. And I said, my God, it's a car. And it, it's a vehicle and it's flying through the air. He hit the concrete barrier. It looked like it hit part of the fence because it's all damaged. And then it went elevated up and then it went up into the air and then it was just a fireball and smoke everywhere. In a statement, the FBI says the FBI Buffalo Field Office is investigating a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge, a border crossing between the U.S. and Canada in Niagara Falls. The FBI is coordinating with our local, state and federal law enforcement partners in this investigation. As this situation is very fluid, that's all we can say at this time. National security sources told CTV News government officials have been operating under the assumption this is a terror-related incident and have been trying to determine if the incident is isolated. And they also say it hasn't been ruled out if the explosion was the result of a medical event or reckless driver. Then, at about 5.15 p.m., the New York governor said there is no sign of terrorist involvement after the preliminary investigation. Several border crossings between the two countries were closed, which left some Canadians and Americans who used the Rainbow Bridge earlier in the day stranded. It's, it's really terrifying and really scary. You never know what's in the car beside you, behind you, in front of you, because so many people cross on a daily basis. I'm actually from, uh, from the U.S., so we, we came over here um, hoping to, uh, to see the falls uh, just for the day. We walked over. Our car is actually in New York right now. So, um, yeah, perfect timing. Three of the four border bridges that were closed reopened late this afternoon. Canada Border Service Agency says normal operations have resumed at the Peace Bridge. The